Hello, fiends, and welcome to the Monster Party Podcast, now a part of the Fangoria Podcast Network. For more information about the network, including other programs, how to follow the show, and find past episodes of Monster Party, please visit Fangoria.com. And now, it's party time. (laughs) Greetings, everyone, and welcome to yet another edition of... Monster Party! Monster Party! Monster Party! (laughs) Oh, yippee! We're ready to party. We are ready to party. Mm -hmm. It's another show. It's a great show. It is. uh, We've got a really great topic, but before we get into that, Mm -hmm. I want to introduce myself. I am Matt Weinhold. And I am Sean Sheridan. And I'm Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. And... This topic, actually, I think Sean, you should introduce it because you came up with. Oh, it. he's 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 crazy about this. This is a topic. great topic. Oh, yeah. This is a great a, topic. This is a Sean Sheridan topic, and it's got a ring to it. It does. Yeah. This this is kind of a, a topic that I it's real close to my heart because I'm I'm a lover. It kind of is you. It is you. <laughs> I am a lover of obscure, forgotten, and you go deep, never seen yeah. horror and sci-fi. Movies. It is he so goes, he's, true. He has brought me. Some films where I was like, "What the fuck? Where did you find this?" In music, like, you, you call these deep my, cuts. Yes, Sean. <laughs> Sean, what is my passion? Is the topic so, today? The topic tonight is called horror obscura. Ooh. Horror obscura. Oh, like obscure that. horror films that probably a lot of our listeners may have not seen or heard of. Really? Mm. Yes, we will be kind of enlightening you guys. Now, yeah. now is yeah. this just is this all horror? Can I can I horror, do can delve a little bit? Yeah, you can dabble there's some, some horror sci-fi. elements. Okay. Sure. Yeah, as long yeah. as it has some si- kind of like Who's horror your guest? Well, <laughs> no, we're going to But before we get to that. <laughs> yeah, before we get to that. Do I, I, I had we, a colonoscopy <laughs> recently. No, 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 there's not no, 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 don't talk about that. Let's talk about our amazing guest. Oh, we have a guest. Friend of Monster Party. Returning to the show. Yes, friend of Friend of the show, my neighbor, lovely guy, you know him from, God, a million shows, Malcolm in the Middle, and Mike and Molly, and of course- American Horror Story. Yes, Mm -hmm. and International Ghost Investigators Hollywood Division, Mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, Dave Higgins. Dave Higgins! Hi, guys. Hi. I love your audience. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All action figures. (laughs) Dave, thanks for being with us tonight. Thanks for coming back. It was great. I guess you had such a great time on our ghost episode. I did. I actually meant to come back at one point. I got sick. Yeah, you got sick, Mm, right? You had a, what did you have? A little, uh, you you had the the vapors or? (laughs) 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 Daughter, I actually came down with the fever. But I did, I I think it was my ankle had blown up or something. Yeah. I couldn't walk. But you're fine now. You look great. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been doing a paleo diet and, and I'm you're, starving. You're sp- <laughs> I, actually, I hunt and gather everything. <laughs> so yeah. I had these mushrooms the other day from a backyard and I was vomiting <laughs> violently yeah? through the night. But I lost about 10 pounds. No, you look I, I, I know. There that's what I well, yeah. you know, Dave, this is this is just great, but you know what? I think Sean is just chomping at the bit to get to <laughs> is it? Yes. Please horror do. obscura. Horror okay. obscura. God forbid obscura. we make our guests feel comfortable. <laughs> A bit of a, <laughs> no, no, no. You know, decompression before we get right into it. Well, but we don't okay. need to talk about mushrooms and stuff. I mean, come on, let, let's oh, get to I this. Want to I, talk about I, I, I want to be educated. Talking the mushroom people. No, well, oh, yeah. no, 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 well, no, you know, it. and we've I already we talked. It. We talked we about that, but it. you know, here's the amazing thing. I mean, but I mean, kind of you, but really, Sean. Sean yes, it is uh, Sean. Sean is just what blows my mind about Sean is Sean has this mind, and he does know these really obscure horror films. And there are times when you know I've gone to your house. You go, oh, Larry, let's let's check out this. Well, what? I've, I've never heard of that. Well, I, I it, love finding something that I've never like seen before or never heard of before. It, you know, we're so we're such hardcore nerds. Hardcore horror yes. fans, 
But, <laughs> but there's still stuff. There's still stuff well, out there that it is amazing, you've never seen. But I'm also amazed. There's a lot of this stuff because I'm an old dude. There's I a lot of this stuff are. I've seen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I've seen it, and I, you guys know the names. I would catch stuff at 3 in the morning in Des Moines, <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> and the idea like that I'd go to you know KRNT's late night movie, and then I'd be watching this, and you wouldn't always get the opening credits, and I'd <gasps> fall asleep before it was done. Right. Oh, right. You know, like some, well, that's, you know, yeah, that's the story of my life growing up, man. Yeah. Oh. I'd wake up in the morning going, no! What happened to exactly. the character? Yeah. yeah. Well, Sean, you are the guy. You are the man. You are the detective. Teach us. The archaeologist. Really, Teach the, us. really the, ar- us. the archaeologist the, the, that unearthed these things that I've, God, I don't know how many things. Like, you turned me on to Little Red Riding Hood and Tom Thumb meets the monsters, <laughs> right. which is the most Strange bizarre, fever crazy dream. fever dream with monsters, and it's right. made for kids. And right, and it's really and it's really weird. People, you know, people will say, "Well, what? It's made in Mexico, but it's it's actually really really cool." It's, it's, it's I and, bizarre. And, and, I really enjoy. And, it. And, you know, Sean, I have it on sixteen millimeter now. Now, now <laughs> I have to ask though, because Sean, a lot of these titles that you have, and I mean, not everything can be found or can it on DVD no, or I mean, VHS. Even or though something. a lot of stuff now is yes. coming out. So many obscure titles now are coming out more and more on DVD and Blu-ray, but there's still stuff that just exists on VHS Mm -hmm. or not even a VHS, like stuff that was broadcast on TV decades ago and you still haven't seen seen it since. You read about it in your, you know, in the reference books and stuff, but it's still out there as this kind of like, you know, and with film. all the stuff that is released, and there's just so much more yet yeah. to even. Well, there's certainly tons. DVD. There's yeah. certainly yeah. tons. My fascination always is when I find something that I watch that's really truly brilliant. Right, like a real discovery. Uh, yes, a real discovery. And um, just recently, I was able to see a print of the Chimp Talks. Mm. Oh, oh, oh the, uh, that's an it's early. A, it's a 1928. It's yes, a silent film. yes, yes, yes. But if you're a fan of Fangoria as I was and would read it, there'd always be a picture from it of a guy. It was a chimp in yes. like so. And that's smoke wasn't smoke. early. And smoke. Early Jack Pierce. Uh, uh, yes, makeup, Jack Pierce did the makeup yeah. for that. He looks and, like uh, a waiter. Yeah, kind yes, of. Yes, he does yeah, look yeah. like a waiter. I'll get right into there if you want. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, there uh, we go. But the that's idea very Adrian was, Barbeau. The film was. <laughs> Was this thing that you'd see images from yes, and never the see photos. the movie? Right. Yeah. Now there's a print that was made from the Kodak collection mm-hmm. that now has kind of made the you know the rounds, and you can get it on DVD, but it's not an official one or anything. It's public domain. It's 1920. Right. Okay, and it's called the Chimp. Twenty cent. It's the Monkey Talk. The, mon- the Monkey Talk. The Monkey Talk. The Monkey Talk. But it's fascinating, and it's it's the great thing about it is it's really a good story. It's like this failed um, this Chimp? failed. Uh, no gymnast, <laughs> not the gym, chimp. This fa- this failed gymnast clown, yeah, uh, remakes himself like puts on this monkey outfit, okay, and becomes a talking monkey that says things like no, and, right, and it, right, it becomes right. the toast of Paris. Uh-huh. Yeah. And at one point, he's kidnapped by somebody who thinks they want, it, and they replace it with a regular chimp, like right. another. <laughs> it's a real chimp, right. yeah. And so that chimp starts attacking his girlfriend that he's this woman he loves. It's totally <laughs> Wait, watchable. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, back it's up. totally watchable. <laughs> yeah, and it's fantastic. He falls in the love with the girlfriend. Woman. Doesn't realize that well, it's now no, no, a no. real chimp. No, 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 no. She's not his girlfriend. I I use that term loosely as in film. He loves her. This is the woman he loves. Okay. Who it's unrequited because he's a chimp. Right. But he saves her life, has to come back. Does she know? She doesn't know that he's actually a, uh, a no, man. No, and she's sweet to him, and uh-huh. and right, he right. is so in love with her. Yeah. And it's actually just so well done. You know, Dave, it's yeah. so funny you should mention this because I've never seen that film, but I do know oh, the you photos. You know that image. No, no, no. Yes. It's, yes. The, the photos monsters. are also in Famous yeah. Monsters. Yeah. I would always see that in Famous Monsters. Famous Monsters, exactly. And I always I said wanted Fangoria. to see that. I, I meant um, Famous but, Monsters. And so this is like 1928? 1927. 27. So it's just sound. And I actually have a DVD out of it at home that Ken Daly purchased. So sound has only been around for about a year. No, no, the, no. Not really. I mean, 27 is when it came out. Okay. Right, right. Uh, sound basically, it was available. Yeah. What, what year was the jazz singer? I think 26. 27. 27. 27. 26? 26. Ooh, we have a disagreement. Is it 26 Let's or 27? I want to say 27. Look. 1926. The subject is the jazz singer. <laughs> yeah. So we have to clear the seven. 27. I, I tip my hand oh, off. I will tip my hand off. Which I would say, this is James the, end of the, in the ah. end of the silent era. If it's not horror, James will know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it's also ironic because another one of my favorite silent horror films, which I think is one of the most seminal 
of these films and is brilliant is the man who laughs. <gasps> oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. 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 No, 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 Conrad, no, Conrad v. v. Conrad V. Yeah. And he, besides being coming into the States off of the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, another right. one that you only watched in film school when I was growing up. I have it on 16. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's the, he was the imp. Uh, the idea that this movie is, first of all, horror as a genre has evolved, and now it's more slashery. But in the classic sense, it was strange tales or yeah. the, yeah. the horror yeah. of his life. Because he and was he had this disfigured he grin. He is basically like, the grin is the Joker from the forties and the right, 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 the inspiration right. for the Joker. supposedly, exactly. yeah. 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 Also, I think also the inspiration to the Shadow. Mm. If you look at the Shadow cartoons from that of the thirties, mm. it's that mask, the scarf over his mouth, and just the nose out. Right. Yeah. That is Conrad Vett. That's like. Wow. It's the same image, the hair back, and mm-hmm. you know. Also, a little bit of um, William Mr. Cast- Mr. Sardonicus. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, you're yeah. right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. But and this is called the the man who, who laughs. laughs. Yeah. Yes, and, and that is available a, on YouTube. You can watch the. And whole. it is. You can get it on DVD. And, you can, yeah. but but it's basically isn't he? I forget. Is he a circus guy? Or here's or, how it starts it, out. He it, becomes a circus guy. Yeah. The story is his father is a nobleman who offends the king. So mm-hmm. what right. time period does this take place? This is like King James the Second. Okay. So this is just before the revolution of, you know, where... Before TV. A uh, little before television. Okay. <laughs> so he's a nobleman who offends the king. So the king says, I want my your son to always have the face as he's laughing at you for the fool you are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's this group of gypsies. Oh, who apparently gypsies. <laughs> create gypsies. Gypsies, why do you hate circuses us? circuses and all that. And they are thrown out of England, but their last act is to make his smile. No. And as a child, he's left behind <gasps> by the gypsies as they flee. And he finds a woman. It's just the greatest. It's so I, dark I just and watched twisted. it recently, it's too. Like, yeah. It's very dark and twisted. And it's that whole thing of all these guys that were making these movies had all been in World War One. Yeah. And seen real horror. Yeah. Right, right. And that's why like, you have the look of those gothic films and, yeah. you know. But it's just a great film, and I highly recommend it. But yeah, again, that's a classic. Again, could not see it as a young man. Yeah, it wasn't right, available right. No, anywhere. You saw no, those, it was You saw those striking but photos. You'd see those photos in, in every magazine. In every, famous monsters. Every I remember famous seeing monsters. Those. Yep. Yes. And I, that, I'm, I'm familiar with the name. I'm familiar with the film. I, I actually saw a documentary on some early silent films, and that was one of and them. And he was a huge star. He became he was, a yeah. giant star yes, at yes. Universal, and he was there. Like, I mean, he just. Huge, right? And he made uh, the doctor, the man who laughs yeah. all the way to the bank, exactly. <laughs> but then once sound came in, yeah, he, he went back to Germany, yes, and then had to flee Germany, Nazi Germany, right? Oh, and wow, came yeah. back. But and you he, probably know him best as the Nazi from Casablanca, yes, that's what most that's right. 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 right, yes, yeah. that's right, yes. Um, and that was like his second career. Going back a little bit to uh, movies about relationships between oh, female no. humans and go. monkeys. Yes. Robert, oh, Robert Altman. Going back to the chip talks. Okay, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. The I, monkey I'm, talks. I'm not the rec- monkey talks. I'm right, not recommending you. this film necessarily. We haven't even got to recommending a film yet, <laughs> except for Dave's. Uh, those two, both yeah. of those, no, no, those I highly recommend. Those are great. Those are great. Yes, those yes. Are great. But yeah. there is a film from 1986 called Max My Love. Wow. And this was oh, this wait. was directed by a Japanese filmmaker Nagisha Oshima, who had done I think in the realm of the senses. Yes, it stars Charlotte Rampling. Yes, mm. who has, I used to have that as my on my Facebook page. <laughs> and <laughs> her in the wow. bath with a gym. You, she has. I think I love you, Dave. She has, for the love of God, yeah, a relationship yeah, with yeah, yeah. a gorilla or orangutan. No or whatever way. It is. What? It is a, I think it's supposed to be a chimpanzee. This, this okay, sounds yeah. like a, like Tanya's Island. Yeah, well, it is. It's Tanya's just a, Island was it's, it is a and really a weird sex. film. It's one of those yeah. like you guys. Does it see? end with her face being ripped off? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how those relationships. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they almost, I didn't they wait, almost always do. I get, didn't wait that long. I couldn't you get, get through junked. it. But as, yeah. as a curiosity, who else is in it? Is it Who's a comedy or drama? Is this is this is this one of your serious films? It's a real movie. I thought he was joking. I know. Me too. Or it was going to go off into some kind of Woody Allen film or something. Victoria Abril is in it. Anthony Higgins plays her husband. Thank you, my my. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's. I guess it was made in in France. Uh, yeah, I think of course it was. It was. By, and it was French. probably probably one of the last movies. What that won't those people fuck? Oshima yeah. Oshima made and right. Obviously, Oshima had a had a pretty um, controversial career as it is. Apparently, but, yeah, so. were there sequels? <laughs> 
<laughs> never see. Although they they claim in the that, sequel, it's an orangutan. <laughs> they claim that that movie with Matthew Perry is a no. Is it uh, is it the Matthew Perry one? Who's got the other chimp movie? Matthew Broderick. <laughs> no, no, that, no. I hate uh, that. Who's got movie. the other Project chimp X? movie? Yeah, There's like two other. Ch- that's Project X. That no, no, that, no. no, 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 no. Which, I'm, the, the one where he in, no, the one where he inherits the chimp, <laughs> and it's. There's Dunstan Danny checks DeVito. In. Dunstan checks in. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, oh no, no. Um, there's wait, another wait, one. That's a wow. orangutan. Wait, Danny oh, DeVito's okay. in it? Danny. Yeah, it's me the, and the chimp. Look the, up me and the chimp. The topic Ho- is horror <laughs> obscura. Is and that, I just, well, and that I, is horror. Yeah, it is. And I and I just want to say one thing. Don't you find it interesting, Dave? Yeah. That <laughs> this film that you like so much. You is never called, know when he's going to no, get no, no, angry. No, no, no. It's like the, this, no. I am a little upset because the film is called the film that you like so much is called The Monkey Talk. Yes. And yes. it's a chimpanzee. It's not a monkey. I agree. He's, that is an ape. It's a great. And, and so that talk? title oh, is wrong. what I was talking about. Is a very good point. You have a very good point that's, a, that's mo- a, the movie dave's talking about is going ape there and it's and know. it's what's his name yeah With tony dan tony, tony dan, dan jessica right. walter T- stacy nelkin and danny devito yes oh yeah. Yeah. my god and it's a baseball playing chimp i believe oh my god not that is horror. no that's a different one no that's <laughs> yes, not, it is. no <laughs> this is there is a different one with a monkey all right is this this is turning into like an ape thing yeah, yeah. i blame what, myself what can't I apes do they can talk <laughs> okay. play baseball horror have sex horror obscura anyway with with conrad veet going back yes. to him okay just, for, right. a, okay just for a quick second please he also did dr orlick's hands Mm-hmm. Which was the hands first of the Orlock? Yeah, 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 sorry, yeah. yeah. That was the first one where the pianist gets his hands. Yeah, sure. Which was remade a couple of times, it's several bunch times, of, bunch yeah. of and times. one of them is a great movie, which is Mad Love, <gasps> nineteen thirty-five. Oh, yes. Excellent, Peter Laurie. Peter, Peter Laurie. Yeah. This is one yeah. of those films. If you watch it, you suddenly are glued to the set. Mm-hmm. It is the creepiest imagery when he puts on that neck brace thing. The to neck play brace the is other crazy. Yeah. With yes, that, and he's got the mechanical hands. Yeah. And there's so, a beautiful cover. There's a beautiful Famous Monsters cover, too, with that yes, character. Yes, it is. And it's a, be- is that a beautiful Gilgis? painting. I think you know? so. I think so. I think yeah. it is. Uh, could you run us through the plot of that okay, for the so people that again, haven't seen it? He's Dr. Orlock in this. He is in love with this pianist's wife, mm-hmm. who's this gorgeous woman. Mm-hmm. And in order to get her, he has the opportunity. He's this doctor who's great at grafting hands onto people. <laughs> and they show him at some point that he's done some amazing surgery, but he's right. in, totally in love with the guy's wife. So to get This is back, in the 20s now. He's uh, this, grafting hands. This is in 30, 1935. 35. So you, 35. You, you okay. could say he had pianist envy. He did. He had oh, pianist envy. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. he's back, everybody. Yeah, yes. okay. But <laughs> you'll remember, it's like you see that image of the shaved head yeah. of Peter Lorre, yeah. and he's got this Welding Ball goggles, yeah, yes. welding right. goggles, yeah. Uh, and so he the basically Eddie Deason glasses. He puts a killer's <laughs> hands on her husband, who needs these hands grafted on, right, right. and then starts driving him insane, mm-hmm. right. telling him that the hands are the, taking over, that they'll the cause him influence to kill. Of the killer, right. Exactly. <clears throat> and it, I'm not exactly sure how it ends. Well, we don't want to tell that anymore. No, 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 no. No, that's true. That's no, true. But, you, but you the basic idea it, is yeah. that, and yeah. I highly recommend the film. No, that's a great one. The that's imagery a, again, is Again, another, another classic very film. Yeah. Very, very classic. And it's the hands. That one is uh, Mad, Mad Love. The Mad, Mad Love. I want to make Mad sure. And, and the Mad hands Love. Hands of Orlock is the earlier is one. The original. But we're talking about Mad Love with Peter Lorre. Peter Lorre. And the date on that, Sean. 35. 35. Is it Fritz Lang? Carl Froon. Yeah, yeah, Carl Froon. Yep. Speaking of... It's like, but M. M. Yeah. Again. yeah another, oh, another, another great Peter one. Lorre. If you haven't seen it, it's fantastic. The film is just called M, M. and it's starring Peter Lorre. It's a German. Da- Wasn't it kind of the movie that kind of put that P- made Peter, Peter Lorre, Lorre on the map? Like a yeah. big star? He was working for <clears throat> Burkhold Brecht uh, in his theater. Like, he was a janitor. And Whoa. Brecht thought he was fascinating and just started casting him in things. <laughs> right. And then from that, Fritz Lang cast him in, in M. Yeah. And that film. Gave him a U.S. career, mm-hmm. and again, you'll remember him from Co- uh, not from Casablanca, yeah, but from Casablanca. Uh, yeah, he is in yeah, Casablanca. Yeah, yeah. Multi the, the passes, twenty thousand leagues yeah, under yeah, the yeah. sea. I mean, oh, really? a tons the of Raven. Stuff. I mean, tons, tons, of, tons stuff. of stuff. Tons of stuff. And M is he is a child molester. Well, or thought to be. Yes, and uh, and he pretty much is. <laughs> uh, so anyway, they try to corner him. The, the whole town comes up against him, and it's again just a fascinating film. They're like street people that hold a yes, court. Yes, the the uh, <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is. It's like basically from Three Penny Opera. It's the same world of that, where right. it's the beggar king. Yes, which you also yeah. see in 
Uh, hunchback. Yes, the hunchback. 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 <laughs> but that's oh, what I was thinking of. In, <laughs> in, the the in Ger- really obscure one. <laughs> the, German, yeah. the German production was the hunchback. Yeah. Das hunchback. Das, das hunchback. Das hunchback. Das hunchback. Of Notre Dame. Yes. Uh, so it's that same kind of hunchback world. Hunchback is a great bread, by the way. Too. It's the you beggars. Try it. It's yeah. the beggars. Yes. The beggars union kind of gets together and says, we've got to stop oh, this yeah. guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now it's almost the same characters from Three Penny Opera. Where wow. Mac the Knife kind of characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, right, right. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Now, Sean, since this was your brainchild, <clears throat> give us one of your titles. Please okay. do. Yeah. All right. So I'm, you know, I'm jumping around to all different kind of decades, all different time periods. And this one's from the 70s, one of my favorite periods. Oh, for yeah. Horror. You're a big Certainly a big horror, horror otherwise. 70, yeah. This is a crazy movie. Uh, I love it. It's called Wicked Wicked. Oh, Ooh. I, I do not know, know, know that one, Sean. 1973. MGM, can I win MGM? Will like put out wow. anything? Yeah. You know? All killing, um, all dancing. This, <laughs> yeah, MGM, yes. At that point, MGM was very desperate. Yeah, yeah. Had right. a lot of money. Yeah. yeah, this movie, the whole film takes place. It's like a murder thriller, and the whole thing takes place at the the famous Hotel Del Coronado in San Diego. Oh, yeah. oh okay. okay. And it follows this. There's like this kind of kind of like Norman Bates ish kind of handyman who works at the hotel. And he has this thing for blondes, and he's killing. Don't they always? <laughs> he's killing. He's killing blonde guests at I've the. Uh, watch that at movie, the hotel, yeah. and it's. Is it's, there nudity? Uh, there's almost nudity. Okay. It's, oh, but, but it's a uh, pretty. But it's, it's that era that side boob. <clears throat> these would have been. Yeah. yeah. These would, for the most part, a lot of the horror films of the '70s were all drive-in movies. Right. And, right. And there'd be a lot of nudity in these. At least one scene. But and that was something for the trailer. Right. You know, and yeah. this one is pretty sleazy and, and graphic for its time. But it's interesting because it's an MGM film, so it's kind of has. It has to be a little classy. A little pedigree, it's, but it's yeah. still sleazy. But guys, the great thing about this movie is that it was the first film and the last film. Filmed in Duo Vision. <laughs> no. Oh, wait a minute. Duo Vision was basically the screen was cut in half. Uh, and you saw what? Two, oh. throughout you the saw entire movie, the entire right? fucking movie. I've split seen screen. This. Uh, oh, yes, wow. split screen. But it was really clever because I they may did have was, seen this. Then I'm yeah. Uh, it's, about yeah. It. It's it's not very well known. It. This movie just recently, I think, came out on DVD from Warner Archive, and they put out you know, a lot of obscure Warner stuff. Archive is great, by the way, yeah, because they, they will stuff. make DVDs for you that's of right. films yeah. that aren't popular. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's right. that's uh, a great way to get Dr. Yeah. Lau, if and, you haven't yeah. seen oh, yeah. the face and of Dr. Bad Ronald. Of Dr. Lau. Bad Ronald. But uh, this film, so this film was as hyped as this was Duo Vision, and it, you know, it was not. It's not 3D. It's Duo Vision. You don't need glasses. Right. And but it was really clever <laughs> but is the it way they did it. Two different parts of action that you were seeing. Well, that's or? the thing. They do it a lot of different ways. In some cases, you're seeing two different locations where something's happening. Other times, it's like the same scene from different angles. Different angles. Okay. But they also use it as like flashbacks. You know, where a guy's talking about something and you're seeing the, at the, the same time. at the same time. But it's really cool and really clever because they do it in kind of ironic ways too. Like, for instance, at the hotel, there's like this one uh, character who's like this kind of sad kind of social butterfly woman who like just lives permanently at the hotel. Right. And she's saying how she was, you know, I was an actress and I was this famous dancer. Basically, the, the theme or the uh, plot of Copacabana. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love that song. Yes. Right. She was Very a mellow. showgirl. Her name yeah. is Lola. All right. We can't do that. We can't pay the rent. No, yeah, yeah. Legal yeah, 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 yeah. is going to be all over yeah, us. Let's not go there. <laughs> but, uh, no, for, for instance, though, this character, she's talking about how she was a famous dancer and she danced for royalty. And you see in the other side of the screen, Her she's, in a strip, she's in a oh, strip that's joint. Funny. That's a lot. She's wow. dancing in a sturdy, you know, this seedy strip joint and guys are <laughs> mauling her. And she's saying, yeah, my husband, my late I'm husband. I'm the tire king. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was just thinking, you know, you have to have something for the royalty. What is that? Yeah. What's the tire king? Tire King's just any of those, but it's like, oh. the, you know what, from the, the good reference for this is Palm Beach Story, when she meets the Weenie King. Do you, do you remember Palm Beach Story is a fantastic film from the 30s. It's Great a, obscure horror 40s, film. 40s, 40s. Not, <laughs> it's not horror at all. Palm Beach, Sorry. man. Palm Beach Story is a fantastic shit film happens. if you haven't seen it. But it, yeah, anyway, so like this, this movie would, would kind of ironic, like, <laughs> ironically show, you know, what's really happening when the, or a person just lying about what they did. And so the other it. side is the truth. Yeah, oh, that's really nice. Cool. That's yeah, I like that. And, yeah. and yeah. it's basically the house, det- the hotel detective has to find out, you know, what's going on. This now, how, how does the story, I mean, it, in your opinion, is what's really great about this film is just that technique? No, it's actually, it's also just it's a, very great, watchable. a great kind of psycho thriller. It's, like I said, it's got some 
really sleazy qualities to it. It's it moves really fast. It's got a great cast. It's got it's a, two movies in one. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tiffany Bowling from uh, Kingdom of the Spiders, Centerfold <gasps> Girls. Oh, she's in it. She's she's a lounge singer. She sings a great song she called does "Wicked Wicked." Does she? <laughs> yeah. Wicked Wicked. The title song yeah. again with legal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's that's <laughs> great pull, pull though. Got her picture up. Tiffany Bowling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This well, makes for great I radio. It does. I know. Yeah. Let's drag things to a screeching halt once again. <laughs> <laughs> it's all my fault. Oh, great. Oh, yeah. So great. Oh, wow. That's Sean not brings from up 74. She, Sean yeah. brings up her like her her photo today. <laughs> Here, okay, right there you go. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. She's got an oxygen mask on. <laughs> yeah, was okay, so okay. so I'm sure for our listeners, we'll we'll put up a picture of this lovely. That's what lady, I was suggesting. You know, yes. yes. You yes. can edit out where I ask for it. Yeah, I, we, we are gonna Sorry, post up this picture. Uh, wicked, uh, wicked, and it's a set. It's yeah, a I ride the pots. Uh, Scott Brady's hey. in it. Yeah. Ed, Ed Cookie Burns is in it. Oh. He's uh, good. Yeah. He's Arthur, very good. Arthur, he has a comb. All, all the characters are all like weird and quirky and kind of messed up, and it's it's really good. And guys, the most of the music don't condescend to me. Is <laughs> yeah. most of the yeah. music is 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 organ player that this old woman is playing and they cut to every once in her playing the organ wow. and it's the soundtrack to the original Phantom of the Opera. <gasps> oh, very oh, nice. And it goes really well with the, the piece. It's really cool. Oh my cool. god. So Sean, is this on DVD? This is on DVD from Warner Archive. And one more thing, what's interesting is that even though Duo Vision was kind of a failed it was a failed gimmick. It didn't, yeah. it didn't repeat. Uh, yeah. The film did not do well when it came out. Yeah. But it was 1973. <laughs> the same it wasn't year. the film that saved MGM. <laughs> no, no. Oh, thank which you, was, Wicked Wicked. Which was a sci-fi film, by the way, that saved uh, MGM. But, but keep going. Keep going right. with that thought. Okay, wait. It, it, 1973, when this film came out, the same year, Brian De Palma released Sisters. Right. Which used oh, a lot of the same yeah, technique, yeah, yeah, although yeah, not, yeah. Through no. the whole, not through the whole movie, though. Where, right. Whereas... Right. Wicked Wicked, it was like, every once in a while they would cut to like a wide well, you know, shot. What, didn't the movie Z use that technique as well? There were like, there's a foreign film that won like the, oh, yeah. the, uh, the Academy Award. I Costa think it Gavras. might have been, was that it? Yeah. Costa right. Story. And it was like the idea screen. of multiple screens. Well, they did yeah. do like, like Thomas Crown Affair. Yeah. Uh, was yeah, there was a lot, there were quite a few. Well, in the 70s, yeah. that was. Wild Wild yes. West. Right. Yeah. Yes. Wild Wild West had but, that. But not, <laughs> but not for the whole movie though. <laughs> no. Right. This no. is, you know, yeah, so Wicked Wicked. I think that's for the best. But it's, I'm telling you. I do too. Let's get a thing that a one time shot. Yeah. Wicked Wicked would make a great, Midnight movie with an audience okay. really would. Yeah. It's really fun. You guys should, should we'll check it out. We'll look into uh, getting a sixteen of that. Yes, All right, so, yeah. Sean, wicked, wicked. Oh, yes. and by the way, by the so, way, yeah. the, the oh, main shit. guy. More? God damn it! <laughs> the main guy <laughs> who yes. plays. How long no, is I, the show? I know. Oh my no, god! I, uh, guys, how long is this fucking movie? Why don't you shut up? Because I want to know. I want to know. Okay, okay. Running time? Two and a half. Ninety minutes. The guy who plays the psycho killer is a guy named Randolph Roberts. And you might know the only thing you might know him from is he remember the early seasons of Happy Days and there's, there's the he's other the Cunning, brother the other Cunningham oh, brother no yeah, way that's him. and he he does the Norman Bates routine in, in a, oh Wicked my Wicked. god Very funny. So check it out guys was he called Stretch I think so yeah what right. went no, wrong no, no, no. with Stretch. the Cunningham boy <laughs> no, Stretch Cunningham was from Archie Bunker that's from oh the, that's right, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh. Uh, Richie's yeah. brother is um, I'm scrambling my toodles Cunningham I don't know so anyway check it out so. You brought up that so one he, that has yeah. duo vision. Yeah. The one I'm going to bring <laughs> Triple up. Triple vision. This yeah. one is actually 3D. Mm. Okay. And it is, from what I understand, I don't believe you. Canada's first horror film. Wow. What? Was that the and, claims at the time that they released it? Or. No, this is do some research. Oh, okay. You know, okay. Okay. All right. But uh, the movie is this is one that I used to see, and it's a 3D film that. I used to see on just regular the 2D TV version, right. and thought it was really Weird. great. Now, sometimes a 3D movie is just for the effects. This is a movie that is interesting in its effects, in what it does with the 3D, just the imagery alone, and the story, and it's called The Mask. Hmm. The oh, Mask. Yeah. Oh. 1961. Wait. Oh. Canadian, uh, also released as Eyes of Hell, directed by Julian Rothman. Paul Stevens, I, I don't know if he became a big star in Canada, but he was the star. Paul and Stevens was in Battle for the Planet of the Apes. Oh, oh there you go. He was one of the mutants at the end. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. You know? Sean Sheridan. <laughs> he, <laughs> yeah. So this movie, the story is- The mask. There is this archaeologist who finds this crazy skull-looking mask. It's sort of like ornate and has all these oh, little tiles yeah. on it. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And when he puts the mask on, what happens is that he sees all this strange- phantasmagorical imagery that sort of brings out the evil in him oh. and makes him commit crimes. Mm -hmm. And so he goes to the psychiatrist 
and is telling him all about this. The psychiatrist is like, well, you know, I, he doesn't really believe him. <laughs> he then goes home, has the mask mailed to the psychiatrist and kills himself. No. Yes. Wow. Within the movie, it wasn't 3D all the way through. It was only 3D when you put the mask, on. Put the mask no. on. And then you saw the crazy image. Oh my gosh. And remember the so trailer? Cool. Yes. Like, put the mask on. Yes. Now. And you even hear that. You hear the mask okay. going, put the mask on, put the mask on. So you put the mask on, and the imagery that you see is so it's great. strange. Really and creepy. Weird. Too. Yeah. Apparently, it was designed by this guy named, it was a montage expert yeah. called <laughs> Slavko Vorkapich. <laughs> I love his stuff. <laughs> great. But but really interesting, very cool soundtrack, yeah. you know, like electro magic sound, yeah. mm-hmm. and this imagery you would see would be like these strange looking people also in masks, very hellish. There was a guy who was like all in tatters, almost like a zombie wandering yeah, yeah. through this weird landscape, and... I, I can't even describe it. You have to see this movie. Okay, that's wow. pretty cool. The mask. And, and I'm telling you, right I now- I it. Jim Carrey's in it. It's and, uh, no, 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 no. That, no, that's a different yeah. That's a different mask. <laughs> Cameron Diaz? But this movie- Cher, This, is, very this movie is now available on Blu-ray, so yes. you can get it for your home 3D system. I have yet to even see it in 3D. I don't wow. have the 3D yeah, I've got yeah, a 3D TV. TV if you want to come by. All right, the, cool. we, we should do that, because I just saw it recently. And I never used the 3D effects. Oh, we need to do it then. But I will do it. Party Dave's house. Yeah. But, I mean, that is a strong record. Recommendation. I'm telling you, it works without the 3D. Yeah, it's really well. The we, mask. Used to, we used to see right. everything on television. We'd see these 3D films like the Three Stooges, 3D. The Creature. The Creature, creature from the right. yeah. yeah. It's not, it's not, is it the first one that is? First or, one is yeah. in 3D, yes. And I remember the just one these. Too, isn't it? I, I don't know remember. about that one. All I know is I, I remember the spear, like the spear gun shooting at you. Yeah. yeah. And the claw the yeah. coming at you. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But we saw all those movies like in 2D. And, and they're still and white, and they're yeah. and they're you still know. great. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. see, th- those are fil- that's a film that th- th- is very well known and, and f- pretty popular. Oh, but, uh, yeah, but but well, I'm I thinking about. I mean, what what, yeah. what Matt's saying about the mask, though, Matt, because I wanted to say that's another film, Matt, that I've seen photos of that big oh, skull thing. You've seen okay, the skull. Yeah, 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 I've yeah, seen yeah, that yeah. in Famous Monsters and uh, on the cover of some yeah. books. And again, Matt, that's another film that I've always wanted to see. So that is... That it's is, really good. So I that think is you would D- like it. So oh, I'm sorry, it is on DVD yes. now? Or, okay. It has it recently okay. came just, out. Just came out. Yeah. Okay. And you're and saying it's on in multiple, It's in multiple formats. You can get it within the Blu-ray. You can right, get right, it right. 2D. You can get it 3D, red and blue. Yes, oh. yes, and you so so you can watch it on any uh, yeah. right. TV. I have the polarized, no, and then the, and then the full on real. Fine, you can watch like it at my one. house. I'll do it. All right. Let's do it. That's fantastic. Well, I've got one. I've got one from 1968, and it marks the return to Hollywood of Anthony Perkins for the first time since Psycho. <gasps> oh. It's a movie hmm. called Pretty Poison. Oh uh, yes, Wait yes, a minute. I'm familiar yeah. with it. I think I remember that. Yeah, film. It's, yeah. It's, it's you know it was very well received, but not widely seen. And it's a really good movie. Um, did he actually? I, I'm sorry, but didn't he make films in between Psycho and that? Not in Hollywood, apparently. Oh, okay. Maybe right. in Europe. Okay. But um, he plays a uh, a troubled man, a troubled young man. <laughs> who, uh, <laughs> That's kind of so he's smart. reinventing Go himself. Bigger, <laughs> yeah. Who uh, apparently had set. Uh, he was an arsonist, and he was in, uh, incarcerated. Oh, hilarious. So hilarious. He, he he's yeah. out on parole. John Randolph. So you're saying his... a lot of the scripts he's offered at that point. <laughs> <laughs> well, his parole officer is John Randolph, and he tries to uh, counsel him. But he he starts in with this uh, this job at a um, I want to say a factory, like an assembly line. But he meets a uh, the local cheerleader played by Tuesday Weld, oh. and he, he's infatuated with her. I think I think I've seen that film, parts of it at least. But yeah. he, he's got this sort of imagination that sort of carries him out of reality, and it's it's described as like Walter Mitty meets Lady Macbeth, because what he doesn't realize is that the Tuesday Weld character, who's really this high school cheerleader, is a sociopath, and she manipulates him into mm. helping her kill his mother who's played by Beverly Garland that's right and women are I'm, all the same I love <laughs> Beverly Garland yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love too. her I well, worked with her one time <gasps> oh, did yeah? you on Ellen she was uh, <gasps> she played wow. Ellen's one of Ellen's mother's friends and wow. I, no. I asked her of course about the hotel and oh. yeah right yeah, right she's yeah. great yeah my three sons you probably yeah, sure. Yeah, right. yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Besides a lot of films in the well, especially Tons of Roger Corman movie. Not, not of this yeah. earth. Yeah. 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 One of my I favorite love her. He love conquered her. the world. Sorry, she was yes. a dish. No, I, yeah. But along those lines, yeah. in a similar vein, and it's again it's Tuesday Weld. And I don't know if you can really call it horror, but it's similar. 
is uh, Lord Lovaduck. Oh yeah, Roddy McDowell. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Wait, that, what? No. He manipulates all these people to get her to be popular. Ruins lives. And I don't know. <laughs> it, it's not a. It's too real. Horror film. <laughs> it's wait, too real. Wait, 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 wait. Did you say Roger? R- Roddy, Roddy McDowell. Roddy McDowell, Roddy McDowell okay. and Lord Lovaduck. Yeah. It's okay. a weird movie that. I don't know. It's not necessarily horror. Uh, well, it, but it it's almost in those, is yeah. that vein of weird movies at night. Right. That I would see it, and Roddy McDowell being cool a th- is a horrific. Yeah. <laughs> you know where he and it has the a cool theme song, guy. right? Isn't there a Lord Love a Duck it's theme nuts. song? Nuts. He comes in, he's like the English exchange student, and he's like, you know 40. what that means? He's forty, and she's like, you know, and he's in high school or whatever. But <laughs> her whole goal is to get a cashmere sweater, like uh, you know. And it's the craziest movie. And does he kill people? I can't even remember if he kills them or just destroys. Roddy McDowell or okay. Roddy McDowell. Yeah, who, I, I don't. Remember. She turns on him at the end. Hmm. Yeah. <gasps> but it, it, it's I think he's just a bad a, guy. Yeah, but he's a very bad guy. Yeah. I mean, it all seems at first you go, oh, he's kind of cool and fun. And then it goes nuts. So if you want to do a double feature, it's Pretty Poison <laughs> and Lord Love, Love a Duck. Duck. Is that too weird? I mean, what would you no, call not for this Lord show. Love a Duck? <laughs> <laughs> what would you what's, call Lord Love a Duck? Well, I, I, what's the date on that? It, it, it's it's got to be around it's the same, same era. 66. 66. Yeah. 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 Ruth Gordon and Harvey Korman. It's fantastic. Oh. Really? It's just nuts. Oh, it, what do they classify it on an IMDb? They say it's like comedy, drama, romance. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. one. Of it's very is. light on comedy, as I remember. <laughs> well, I think it purports to be funny. Yes, yeah, yeah. but so uh, it does. Fascinating movie. Though. It does belong in horror obscura. Or uh, I don't. Does Roddy McDowell a, do his thing with this forehead where he kind of goes? If you're a fan of Roddy <laughs> McDowell, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. definitely one. It to certainly see. counts yeah. as obscura. That's it is but, obscure, yeah, but, but, but it's crazy. Good. All right, but that's a good choice there. Pretty, this is this oh, is your much pretty this, poison, absolutely pretty poison. amazing. Worth checking out. It's actually a good movie. I'll you, check it out. Yeah. I've yeah. never, I've never seen it. You guys I, have I all I have brought not. up amazing films that and uh, films that I've heard of, but uh, I've never seen. And Dave, I'm, I'm going to check some of those out. Those are oh, fantastic. And what do you got, Larry? Anything? Uh, no, I'm. I again, guys. I think I'm more of a student in this one. I, oh, I'm like, right. I'm you, absolutely. You can, ta- you you can take a, a chance. What's take a, a film chance. that you would watch late at night that you <sighs> would go to school to talk about and no one knew what you're talking about? Because that's crazy. basically, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking well, we about. Going yeah, to school. The films. There is okay. Atragon. I, I no, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, it's it's funny. A lot of the, the world has changed since we were young men because yes. these films are so much easier to see than when we were young. If you saw it once on television that right. was it yes yeah yeah except lord love a duck they would air that every <laughs> no, that day. was on a lot i remember that yeah <laughs> well this guy do you ever see freaks like, like... okay um that was one on my list is a film no, you couldn't see as no. a kid when i was a young man i didn't want to watch banned. it right? yeah i don't want to watch yeah. it you've never seen it i have I, I i actually have the dvd i've never opened it wow, wow. Really? you should it's watch a great it movie. it's a great movie you really a great perfect movie. example you banned Freaks? it in your own house yeah yes that well it's not the only uh, star trek 5 i've never <laughs> well, re- that, removed from you know keep that in the plastic it's, it's, yeah. it's better Definitely, than star yeah. trek okay, 5 it, i have yeah. a 16 wow. millimeter print of it as matter i have now one too yeah. So, yeah. so wait a minute. Star Trek so, yeah. five? Freaks. Of Star Trek. No. I wish. So, <laughs> Freaks. That's uh, Todd Browning. 1931. Right. 1931. Uh, and Todd Browning made it off of the this success on... of Fra- Frankenstein. It was his next feature. But, but, but I thought this, Dracula, was, I thought this was done at MGM, right. though. I thought Freaks Whatever, was done at, Dave. At, done at MGM. <laughs> it may be an MGM film. And, and was, there was yeah. some issue. Like, so so Browning goes, hey, come on, Freaks. Let's go to the commissary. You know? and, <laughs> and so they all did. And, and Actual. Then, that's actual, because they did that's an actual transcript <laughs> of how he got No, no, no. This is one of the stories that I heard. And so they all went and they went to the commissary. And at that time, you have to understand at that time, you know, these because they were real. They were real. These, these, these were people, these who were people who had disability, and real disabilities, disabilities yes. and, and and you know, today it's not very. Uh, yeah, today it's yeah. not very. It's not PC, you know. It isn't but but PC. but at that time. The people in the commissary were like revolted. They were like, "Oh, what, what are these freaks doing well, here in the commissary?" It became a banned film. It was yeah. banned from the Catholic League. I think banned it. Um, it was a flop. Oh, yes, first and foremost. Yes. But right. then in the seventies, colleges discovered it. But that's also where we got the Marx Brothers came back. Yeah, W. C. Fields came back. Sure, but never could see that film. It was a yeah, banned for a long time. Film. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 I think Island the first of... time I saw it was on VHS. I know, I know yeah. that's how I saw and it. And it was yeah. out of some freaky N- Right. Um, now Dave, don't don't place. get me wrong. It's not I look, I've seen clips. I've seen I've seen bits and pieces. I know you saw, all the pictures. You've seen and pictures I know from and it. I know I know the story. I, I know it. But to I see guess a man I got, with no arms and no legs roll a cigarette with his mouth. When I have to watch it 
if I watch it, do I have to do it on an empty stomach? Or I mean, I it's got not, it all. It's yeah, not, not at all. Vomit inducing. No. no. And the other pe- thing is, the, it makes it, it makes the point that they are people. Well, they are, yeah. They are, they're, they're, they're treated like three dimensional human beings. Yeah, they're the not the villains. So, so Dave, yeah, why don't you? Right. The, 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 re- the so-called regular yes. people are yes, are the villains. villains. Now, the story of freaks. The basic story. The basic of story of freaks. I guess we have to say that the it takes place um, in a circus. Yes, and there's a little person in yeah. it who is falls in love. Who was, if you know the the unholy three? Yes, yes. he's the little baby unholy right. three character. I can't remember the actor's name, but basically he he's, is in the is circus. It Hans, Hans, and the thing. Hans I think. and and he's wealthy. Yes, and yeah. there's a beautiful woman in the circus that he is in in love with. Yeah. There's also a little person who loves him that's really cute. She's yeah. Frida. Frida. She loves Hans. But this full-size regular woman who's having an affair with the muscle the strong man, man, the yeah. strong man yeah. she basically, he decides that she should lead him on and marry him and take his money. Right. So that's the basic plot. And then the freaks, they get revenge on that woman. Right, yeah. right. Doesn't he, because I, I, it's been a while since I've seen it, does he kill himself or try to kill himself? He does try. He takes poison. He tries yeah. to kill himself. Yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah. And so, you know, the freaks know what has gone down and they band together. And, and I think the to first try time, to get revenge. the first time I ever saw clips from it was like on a uh, night flight. They'd show like the Google Gobble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, you know, those Google were, you'd Gobble, see, one yeah, of us. one of us, yeah. one of us. It's a little yeah. song they, they would sing. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, if you have not seen freaks and you consider yourself a fan of horror, Yes. Oh, so you got to see it. You got to. You got. I'm just saying. Just a little, see it. Just little dig at me there, Dave. <laughs> no, okay. no, no, no. I'm, a, I'm actually saying this to the people here, but I'm oh. saying it to you too. Yeah, you got to. You see are it. one of those. Okay. Really, I am. I look. I, I'm going to admit that. I look. I, I haven't. You know, I've seen a lot of films, but you know, I don't, haven't seen as many obscure films as, as Sean. But see, and this Matt. one is was a, a very obscure film, but now it's so like on now. AMC. Yeah. It's yeah. on TCM. I'm sure, sure, yeah. TCM is, shows yeah, it all the time. It's, now, now, nowadays, it's well regarded. It's okay. a classic film, and yes. it, it's it's just the imagery is so great, and the way that they cover the subject, and that's what Todd Browning was trying to say, I believe, with the whole thing mm-hmm. was that these are people. These are you know, right? They have emotions. If you cut them, do they not bleed? Yeah. I mean, it's basically, they're the Heroes. Yeah. 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 Well, now, okay. If we want to talk horror obscura, you could talk about the 1967 semi remake of Freaks yes. called She Freak. Yes. Oh. Which oh. I own a what? copy of that. I do saw that in your backyard. Yeah. Sean, I, that I, don't know, I don't know this one. She, she, freak. Freak. she freak. She Freak. Which is making the same idea. It's like this waitress who's uh, scooped up from, you know, being this, you know, just working at this tiny town to work and, in, and in the in most this amazing, like, home movie color. Yeah, that yeah. film is it's, shot in like it's shot in like uh, yeah, that Fuji, Kodachrome. Yeah, Kodachrome yes, looking. Yes. It looks like they must have shot in sixteen millimeter. It's so bright. And yeah, she's vivid. like this kind of greedy kind of you know you know she she kind of like manipulates all the men and it, basically she's the villain. Right. And the they only get thing that's similar is the ending. Yeah, they, they turn her into a yeah, freak, which we've just blown. Yes, through well. 19th oh, <laughs> you know what? Uh, I, I, you can give that one a miss. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> really? So you're not a fan of that one? I am not a fan. You don't want to see that film. Beyond all. Oh, she oh, freak, you don't oh, yes. so, so, so Sean, terrible. No, no, Sean. So I'm just saying, is it something that it's an obscure one, but not really the greatest film? Like, like compared well, to Freaks, I, I'm just, not I'm at all. Just writing He's off just of saying, Freaks. I'm I, just saying, that I it like, is obscure. It's I must say best, that I but. like this kind of thing where a conversation brings up another film. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah. And this and is how we would discuss the these things before yeah, video. Right. Sure, exactly. right. Yeah. But yes, she freak. I showed that in my backyard. It was not worth seeing. <laughs> no. No. We had a good time it. with it. But for the color is fantastic. What it was. And the you shots know, of like if the you see one state fair color and, you know. film, <laughs> <laughs> this one yeah. is in color. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. <laughs> so I've got one. This one is from 1960, which That's uh, before my time. Yeah, four years before I was born. Oh. Big favorite of mine. It's known in the US as Mania. But the Whoa. real title is The Flesh and the Fiends, directed by John Gilling. Hmm. And what it is, British, it is it's a British film, and it stars one of my favorite actors of all time, Peter Cushing. Oh. And it's the story of Burke and Hare, oh. the famous grave robbers. Yes. Yes. Wow. Was, the story was remade into yeah, uh, The, the gra- Doctors the, and the Devils. There's a few versions. but A bunch yeah, of versions. Yeah, yeah. But the story goes, it's Burke and Hare were these guys who would- They, they paid a man. They- hospitals would pay these guys to get bodies for their cadavers for medical school. And of course, the fresher, the better. 
Mm. And so they so, started. They originally would rob. Yeah, graves. like yeah. well, and yeah. the story is they they rob. And it's graves. based on true story. Yes, that, that this happened in Scotland, eighteen twenty eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah the cadavers were wow. you know, hard to come by. So they <laughs> they ran out of the graves that they robbed because it was originally supposed to be like prisoners or people right. who donated their money or their body. Right. So they started digging up graves and getting people. They go, these are little ripe. Yeah, we need something. <laughs> we need something fresher. So they would go Say out. They got the idea. Hey, let's murder people. <laughs> no, and bring them in. And so in this movie, the doctor played by Peter Cushing is uh, who's doc- he's just brilliant. It, yeah, I mean, Robert Knox is the character's name. And so they bring these bodies, and he's like, he's like, wow, these are great. And he kind of realizes, you could tell that. They, there's only so many people dying that fresh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's kind of turning a blind eye to what they're doing. Yeah. And there's a side story with his assistant who falls in love with uh, this prostitute that's in town. And there's yeah. a weird sort of crossing of the two stories. Oh. That's a nice twist. Now, is this black and white? It is black and white. You know, because there was a move at, at a certain point in the 60s. If it was like a horror film or a drama, you'd do it in black and white. If it was a comedy, you did it in color. But if you needed like, I mean, that would almost call for blood. Yeah, you want to make it in color, but yeah, it was think, still cheaper. To I make think it, it was still during point. the time where they were doing still. They were still doing a lot of uh, black and white films. Oh, yes. definitely. Well, definitely. Well, Hammer was doing very vivid color for the monster films, but for the psycho influenced movies, that's true. Like purely black, black and white, like paranoia. Yeah. Right, right, right. 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 It's true. And this is this is just done with such love. It's a real classy production. The acting is amazing, and then of course Burke and Hare. Burke, played by George Rose, and William Hare is Donald Pleasance. Ooh. Oh, and they Donald are Pleasance. so yeah. good, so creepy. And yeah. the way that they like, there's one great scene where they're luring this old lady to her death, and like, "Come on, honey, I got a drink for you at home." Oh, okay, mm. and and they are just beyond sleazy and creepy. <laughs> and it's a it's a wonderful movie. A lot of great twists. A lot of great statements about you know, medical ethics and all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, high on my list. Check it out. Wow. Cool. Cool. Okay. Uh, I got a good one. Yeah. Uh, this is really, a really good film. I don't know how many people know about this. This is a excellent British film from 1967 called Our Mother's House. Our mm-hmm. Mother's oh, this House. One. Directed no. by Jack Clayton, okay. who oh, did wow. The Innocents. <gasps> oh, the great and, movie. Wow. Yeah. One of my favorites. Super, superbly acting movie. It's these seven kids who live in this big house in London, who have a very sick, very religious mom. And the mom dies, and they decide to bury her in the garden and go on as if nothing she happened. Because yeah. they don't want to be split up. Right. right. Kind, of, kind of a little bit like, like later on, like... Little girl that lives down the lane. Lives down yeah. the lane. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so these seven kids, they take all of her furniture, all of mom's furniture from her room, and put it in this shed in the, in the backyard... And they have mother time. They go out and they kind of like, you know, read to her. Yeah. And then they, one of the older daughters starts to kind of pretend to channel her. And, you know, when the yeah. kid, little, littler kids are being bad, you know, yeah. mom says to do this and everything. Oh, okay. And the kids range from like maybe four to four or five to like 12 or 13. Amazing, amazing actors. Pamela Franklin is in it. She's one of the older daughters. Always uh-huh. good. Uh, Mark Lester is one of the kids. Wow. He has, oh, has a little, has a little yeah, wow. stutter, you know, and mm. he's great. Kids are fantastic. Anyway, they go about doing this, pretending nothing ever happened. Mark Lester figures out how to forge mom's checks yeah. so that they can go to the bank and get money. Yeah. So everything's going well until the no good long lost dad shows up, oh. played by Dirk Bogart. Hey. Ooh. Oh, and I love he's this. Like, he's like a real charmer. Oh, and then he finds out basically what happened. It's like, oh, okay. And he kind of goes along with it. It's a classy it. movie. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But he's a real charmer, but he's a no good guy. And he's like, he's an opportunist. He starts getting Mark Lester to sign checks for him. To, oh. and, and he starts bringing home floozies. And, oh, and floozies. Yeah. And it's, it's great. Like the kids, you see, you see the, later the kids are like smoking cigarettes and oh. the little, little four year olds looking at a Playboy magazine. Wow. <laughs> you know, but the, the older daughter. Well, that's okay. The old, yeah. The older daughter, you know, she's on to him though she knows yeah. what's going on she, so it's this cool kind of battle of, of wills between you know because he wants to you know he he's, then suddenly somebody comes over to look at the house like what are you going to sell the house like I'm get rid of you guys you're going to an orphanage I'm going to you know it's oh. so, so well done it's it's more it's more like a it's a thriller you know it's like a character driven thriller right. but there's a final confrontation with all these kids and Charlie is the dad <laughs> and it's great but it, I'm telling you the movie is so beautifully acted all these all these British 
kid actors are so great. I love that. It is just I've got a horrible version of that. That's it's (laughs) obscure, but now it's very watchable and easy to find. Now is Spider Baby. Oh, so so Spider Baby. No, that's that's more like a kind of like a. That's more of a dark comedy. Yeah, more, but that's more overt horror. Where is overt horror? Yeah, murder. There's also the yeah. Yeah, they have the disease that makes them young act younger. Yeah, yes, right, right. Lon Chaney Jr. Right, Lon Chaney Jr. Singing the theme song. Yeah, singing. Reciting. singing. Are you gonna sing that for us, James? Her name was Lola. No, 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 no. no. no costing uh, us so much money. Um, <laughs> but our mother's our mother's house is great. I think it. Our mother's I house. It, I think it just came out actually, amazingly, still it, on a uh, Warner Archive. I just released it. I think it shows up every once in a while on Turner Classic Movies. But it I'll is look for really, it. really good. If you I'll like I'll that I'll kind I'll of I'll British thriller, I'll check it out. If you do have TCM. If you have Turner Classic Movies, you know you can see it online. They have that mm. opportunity. If you missed it, that's true. You can watch it online. And what's the and date? That on happens the, to me all the time. Is like, Sean? yeah, somebody that's true. posts right. and you see the movie's already half over. Right, right. You can just go online. And but what's true. the date wow, on that? Yeah, um, yeah. Our Mother's House was 1967. 67. Jack Clayton. So far, great, great out of all the movies you mentioned, Sean, that's the one I'm most interested in right now. Right. That yeah, sounds it's like really good. Well, it sounds British. like a fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's great. But that era too of the 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 English film. Yeah, yeah. It's just such amazing actors that came out of that era. Yeah, like like Twisted Nerve and Tender Ellington Place. Twisted Nerve. Twisted Nerve. Which the song was used in. Oh uh, uh, yeah, and uh, Kill Bill. Kill Bill, right? <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, again, 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 J- Matt. I know. Stop I, them. I, no, it's okay, we're, guys. We're done. Will you guys, will we're you guys sued. Just stop? Bernard Herman squared. Bernard Herman, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Wow. Right. Okay. Well, there's also a great uh, damn song named Twisted Nerve. So <laughs> oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay. Now this. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out something here. Okay. Night, now, night of the Lepus. Uh, y- no, <laughs> no, 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 not Two. the Lepus. No, no. Okay, although, this although is, that could sort of belong. Look, the the yeah. Well, okay. Was, that, no. So Dave, I was I had yeah. I knew I I knew that just about everything I'd seen. I knew you guys had seen, and I didn't have anything secure. But there is a film that I saw that. Ah, it's kind of like it is more considered a thriller, but it really terrified me. It was really, I, I really so. those a are terrifying. The scariest to horror. me. Those are much scarier than than classic horror for me as the thriller. So, so this is actually on, a yeah, film yeah. from actually 1936, Fritz Lang, and it's a film that maybe is not the well known Fritz Lang film, and that's called Fury. Hmm. And oh. the Fury is with a great actor, Spencer Tracy. Spencer Tracy, oh, yeah. right? And yeah. okay, so okay, so basically, what it is is. Is we all know Spencer Tracy being this wonderful character actor who did a bunch of films with Catherine Hepburn. Well, he plays this wonderful character in Fury, and as the film starts out, basically it's a guy he's engaged, he's, he's or he's yeah, yeah. he's got he got new he's a newlywed, and he's got this great little dog named Lucky, you know, <laughs> and he goes into this town, you know, and it just so happens when he comes to this town because he's going on this trip, there was some kind of a murder. In yeah. this town. Oh, I know this. And film. there was it's a fantastic. description. It's a great movie. Yeah. Fits and and nobody knows who the Spencer Tracy guy is. Exactly, he's and a drifter. So they no, he, but he's not a drifter. That's just it. Yeah, he's, he's going to meet his girlfriend. He's gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. His, his wife. And and yeah. it's and it's like what terrifies me is he seems like a regular guy, and it's like yeah, hey, and here's my dog, and I'm come traveling through town. I'm Sounds see, like it's going to be fun. And everything's going to be fun. Yeah. And apparently, this murderer liked some kind of. Peanuts, special peanuts, and yeah. they and the the police when they stop and they go, so do you like these peanuts? Hey, I love so, yeah. hey, I love these peanuts. Anyway, long story short, he's taken and put in jail. They suspect him of murder. Okay, and yeah. what's frightening to me is this is a film that is it's like the mob rule. What happens is the town goes nuts. And they be, oh my gosh, this guy, this murderer is they've got him in the and it's like he 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 hasn't even gone to trial. No, he no, he's even, just being held. He's just point, being yeah. held and with his little dog. Anyway, yeah. the town it's like a lynch mob is outside. Exactly. And what freaks me out about this film, and this is the wonderful, lovable Spencer Tracy, okay? The town goes nuts and they start to Basically, they're they're gonna burn down this jail. They burn down the jail, and he's locked in. And he's locked in. And when I was watching this, I thought, "Oh my God!" As this happens, the the townspeople go nuts. Bruce Cabot from King Kong is in sure. it, yeah, and yeah, he's yeah. like, yeah. he's like maniacal. He's like throwing fire in there, and it's almost like they're all dancing around. <laughs> yes, you know, yes. the hey, we're killing this murder. Well, anyway, so the 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 jail burns down. Oh my God! Oh my gosh! Spencer Tracy has been killed, or whatever, and. It turns out, it turns out that at the time, and who who did who did this? A film crew, not a video crew, but a film crew with a film camera, filmed the event. 
Hmm. They filmed people throwing fire at. They film. So what happens is after this terrible thing happens, it is learned that oh, the murderer has been captured and the Spencer person that Tracy was innocent was yes. innocent, and people all freak and out. And tourist trade, like right, no, no, right no, in the no, cellar. No, no, yeah. no. But the, but what. People don't realize is he escaped. He managed to escape. <laughs> I love this movie, but yeah, sadly, right. yeah, yeah. Lucky the dog did oh, not. Oh, yeah, Lucky! Yeah. Which and I, I How nearly, ironic. I nearly cried when I when but I saw this. He turns him, and he's got a burned it, face. Yes, it makes and he, him, and he's and he's bitter. Yeah, and he's angry, bitter. and yeah. he has there, been changed. There's a big speech or something towards the there's end. There's an right? amazing. It would, I don't want to give this away. It is a film that uh, I but think he, is, he starts yeah. getting revenge. That's yes, the, that's the important yes part of it. He comes back. And yes, starts and killing and, and, off. No, 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 or, no, 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 no. That's no, a different exactly. movie. Exposing them. What happens is all of these people in the town are brought to trial. Oh, right. and, but there's <laughs> there's no evidence. And so they all these people say, Unless well, get I, 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 I was right, actually okay, at yeah, home yeah, when this yeah, happened. Yeah. Well, it turns out the film is brought forth. Right, right. And they show footage of all these people. And it's absolutely terrifying. And as one of and those he things, could save their lives and he refuses if, at least. And it's and I'm not I'm gonna let it go there. It's, it's from nineteen thirty six. It's Fritz Lang, maybe not the most famous Fritz Lang film. It's kind of like dark dark it's, noir. And too, it's, like yeah, thriller, and it's right? such a it's can such I, a great film. Can I yeah. run off that one? Because I think that I sure. I saw that movie yeah. one night and it was like Fascinating. Yeah, and I, I loved it. I was riveted. Yeah, and and, and it terrifying. reminds me not that again. So you're saying thriller, and yeah. uh, that helps me because the one I thought of that is no longer as obscure. Uh huh. But it was the only film directed by the Hunchback of Notre Dame, um, Charles Lawton. Charles Lawton. Yeah, Night of, of the Hunter. The Hunchback. Oh yeah. It's it's a thriller, and it's not a horror film. But when I was a young kid, very obscure film. Night it was of not Hunter. successful. No. Right. Bob Mitchum is so terrifying in it. Yeah. Uh, when he had Brother Love and Brother yes. Hate. Yeah. And he he's such a brilliant character. Mm. And Shelley Winters is, yeah. is so fantastic. All the all the performances are so good. Yeah. Right. And it is terrifying, especially yeah. when I saw it, I was a young kid. Yeah. yeah. That film scared me because mm. they get chased by this evil man. Yeah. And yeah. the little whole kids. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, just a great film. And if it I don't like, know if it's look, look, horror. It's a thriller. Kind of, it's kind you know, of, there's yeah. very but, but eerie it, imagery. Yeah, it it's like of, at that time, like when I saw Fury, it's one of those things. It's it's terrifying, and yeah. to me, it was horrifying. And as as a young young kid, you know, it's like there's nothing you can do. How do you get out of this? And I and it was um, it's Invaders from Mars. Is yeah. that the one? Yeah. yeah. Where it's the little kid that they don't believe him. Yes. Right. Right. That used to scare the hell out of me because as a kid, you're watching it. I was probably seven or you know yeah. ten when I watched it. Yeah. And you're me watching too. it. You go. Parents don't listen to you. No, you know, uh, no. It's, you identify it's, with it. You would totally identify with it, and it's scary. And they yeah. go down into the depths, and, yes, uh, into the Martian, yeah, um, like ant colony yeah, that they exactly. built. Exactly, that's a great horror film, classic sci-fi mm-hmm. horror film. Yeah. Well, I've got one that's actually a TV movie from 1976, and it's it's one of my favorite movies of all time. trilogy of. Actually, no. Because we talked about that. That's that's like a famous one. Now this it is. is uh, yeah, yeah, this right. is a movie called One of My Wives is Missing. Oh, and I know that one. It stars James Franciscus <gasps> as a man on his honeymoon. Yes. And his wife disappears, and he's freaking out. And... And uh, it's based on there's earlier movies that that's all based you know, on. Dial- Strangers on a Train, stage right, play, right, I think, right? Dial M for Murder. It was based on a stage yeah, play. Yeah. Uh, the screenplay was written by a guy named Peter Stone who had written Charade and The Taking of Pelham One Two Three, which oh. are two fantastic. Love films. those. Movies. The movie really takes off. Elizabeth no, Ashley good. shows up. up <gasps> Anytime she her. shows up in '76, it's <laughs> trouble. <laughs> yes. And she's claiming to be his wife, and he's insisting that she's an imposter. She's not his wife. And he gets the local police constable, played by Jack Klugman. His Great. Who's great? great. Uh, always great. And Klugman doesn't believe him either. He's like, "Look, you got a gorgeous wife. What's your problem?" And yeah, he's like, "Well, yeah. it's not well. really my wife." And it, it, this... and he should have just stuck with her. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great movie. Yeah, it yeah, really, it really, really is. Very, very the, tricky kind of plot. A lot, yeah. a lot of twists. Very clever. Yeah, we were lucky. Nice. Yeah, we were lucky to have those made for TV movies that was Man. like Sunday night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know? well, yeah. That, yeah, that movie stands up like today. As it's just, I'm saying a lot of those do. You'd be surprised. They were done with great casts. Yeah, it's yeah. All, it's all uh, story the crews were all the same crews who were shooting everything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, but it was like. It was cheaper for the studios. I mean, the the ABC who started doing those type of right. things. It was cheaper for them to make one 
than it was to get the rights of movies right. every week to try uh-huh. to give a blockbuster new right, film. Right, right. And this was this was Aaron Spelling, and and from what I read, it was actually uh, considered as a pilot for a series to star Jack. Klugman. Which again, they used to do all these these uh, two right. hour pilots, right. which oh, were made for TV yeah. movies, so they could still program them in. Night Stalker oh, was originally yeah, a two hour right. movie. Yeah, uh, exactly. made for two, uh, of two, two of them. Yeah, yeah. Right. but that was because they didn't pick up the first one, or was it? Well, the first Night Stalker, the first TV movie, was like the highest rate. TV movie of and we every yeah, all time, it. yeah, yeah. And, then, and I remember watching it yeah. that night, yeah. Me and too. I think they, I think they, they wanted to kind of maybe just test the waters one more time, so they did another one called The Night Strangler. You guys sure right. you like right. this? Right. <laughs> 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 really but was it possibly not made as a pilot? Is that was the deal? Because all the characters were, were so laid out, even in the first two. I mean, yeah, no, I think well, so. but I it's. Think I, I would argue that the original Night Stalker TV movie, those characters are very different from what eventually turned into the show. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, yes. That always happens, but that happens a lot. Anyway, just characters change once they get into a series and you want everybody to be friends. That's always where it changes. Right, right. 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 Dan Curtis, and Dan Curtis wasn't as involved in the series as he was in the movies, and I think that made a difference. Right, right. But they were fantastic. Yeah. But, um, Trilogy of Terror, I'm sure you've talked about many times. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's one of our our favorites. favorites. One of our favorites, That was one of those ones that we all knew about it. Of yeah. course. That, was, that is a reference that Karen anybody Black. our age. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That Zuni doll is imprinted yeah, on our yeah. subconscious. <laughs> yes. Which, if you look at a real yeah. Zuni fetish doll, looks nothing like that. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know real Zuni dolls, they're all over Arizona. Those are the Zuni. In, that's what a Zuni fetish doll is. It's those little circular mouth. Oh, right. Oh. Yeah. Freaky kind of hair out, but it's like not as human and uh, <laughs> jungle really guy looking. But you know what? But you know what? I, I bought it. Okay. Oh, no, I, totally. I, I, I bought they it. They used to use those kind of references yeah. on us all the time. Right. And they would, <laughs> it wouldn't pay off. Well, like think of all the mythology that they had to shove into a Night Stalker. Oh, mm-hmm. where you yeah. kind of mix it and match it yeah. if it sure, worked yeah. or if it didn't work, you know. Or this week it's a Native American. The thing know, is, Kolchak right. shows up every week, and then there's a monster. You know, the thing is, if you see Darren McGavin, <laughs> yeah. you better watch out because it's going to be a monster. Around. Definitely, <laughs> it's especially off. if he's driving a, a Mustang convertible, it's trouble. <laughs> yeah. If he's driving an old sedan, it's a Christmas story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly, he's the old man. He's got amazing unlucky luck, like <laughs> all well, proof those, of the supernatural. Follows him around. Guys, I know. But you know that was shoehorned somewhere where no one said they wanted to do a series with Darren McGavin. And they made that thing, and then it's like, <laughs> he really works in this. Mm. We're going to have to oh, make yeah. these. Yeah. You know? yeah. All right. Are you up next? Uh, uh, sure, sure. I um, I got another one. Uh, this is uh, this is from the 1950s, kind of a classic, you know, low-budget horror from Sam Katzman. Okay. Mm. Producer who did a lot of great schlocky movies like The Giant Claw. Uh, and no. uh, Guilty pleasure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and like the movie it's called- no Reptilicus. Go ahead. <laughs> no. I like Reptilicus. Um, but this movie uh, is from 1957 called The Zombies of Moratow. Ah. Oh, oh you know no. I, oh, I, I love this Sean, one. Sean, I think I, I, I've heard it's of it. I don't know so this movie. It's so slow. Uh, oh, but it's great, though. It's got, this movie is about it's a gang of crooks who are like in Africa. And they go into this kind of plantation or whatever. And they're uh, looking for diamonds, sunken treasure that's in the bottom of this, of this ocean. But it's guarded by zombie sailors <laughs> who are like, <laughs> basically there's been lots of like attempts to grab this sunken treasure. And every time there's like a curse and, you know, the, everybody dies trying to become zombies. Right. So zombies actually walking around. Underwater. Underwater. Just around the treasure. But they don't run, do they? No, they don't run. Aha! Uh-huh. No. I well, thought you so. can't run underwater. Go that, ahead. That's right. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little slow. That's right. That is very difficult. Yeah. If, if you want, if you want, like, like, and if you really want to do, they do have decompose, right? So they would slow down as their muscles <laughs> deteriorate. Right, yeah. yeah. These ones don't decompose. Yeah, but they just walk around underwater. Oh, they don't decompose. Uh, no, no, they're walking around in the set that doesn't really have any water in it. That's, very slowly. That's oh, the funniest part about the movie yeah. is uh-huh. like it's guys walking really so slow with like bubbles. Yeah. shooting up out can, of there. Can know? I say? Yeah, it's a, great. A well-regarded <laughs> movie. Speaking of uh, pirate treasure, mm. the fog. Mm. Uh, oh yeah, I'm yeah. not a huge fan of that movie. Really, I'm like like not. I, just, I like it more and more. Yeah, no, me too. Do you? Yeah. Have you been watching it lately? Is that the? I watched it fairly recently. I watched the. 
that movie has gotten better on repeated viewings, in my opinion. All right. Just the, some of the visuals and the stuff that they added later, because they added all the zombie sailors in that one after they showed yes, it. Because they, did. they didn't have any of that There was stuff. no payoff. It yeah. was just, yeah. It was yeah, just, right. it was all mood. Yeah, yeah, yeah And yeah. that was not enough. Yeah. And I love the zombie well, sailors. Well, g- getting back to the May Tower, whatever it is. That, <laughs> so, 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 no, so, Sean, I, I just want to ask something. So, are you saying that? I mean, you 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 say, oh, it's one of the funniest things. Here. No, are you I, saying I, that I, it's you, ridiculous talking, funny? Well, oh, because if, I, I mean, if you're talking about a movie that is like, like as Dave was saying, a classic example of like a late night TV movie that you'd see with like a horror host or something. Zombies of More Tower is very much that. So, did you find it like a charming film? I, I, mean, I find it very charming. Yeah, it's got the great Allison Hayes in it, who is at her peak. Okay. Super hot, super salty, oh. <laughs> sultry. Um, Not uh, her career, but her. No, but she's physical. great in it. Morris Not Ankrum, who's in okay. every every fifties yeah. horror film. Yeah. Uh, Greg Palmer, Ray Crash Corrigan. Oh, in it, is I think he? Is one of the zombies. Oh. But also think about it, it's it has very unconvincing underwater effects, but that just adds to the charm. Okay. It's also probably the first underwater zombie movie. Ah, there other, so other there's other that. Okay, <laughs> yeah. but Matt, 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 you are not a fan. I don't think it's that good. But uh, we did on. go away. The title is just Horror Obscura. We did it say... Is. It uh, doesn't have to be good. Yeah, yeah. But it's yeah, like, right. if you're going to recommend... I mean, I, I mean, Matt, I you're not recommending I wouldn't it, recommend Sean, you one. are. Yeah. Is that what you... I mean, I mean, probably Get like, through a lot of movies before yeah. that one. <laughs> okay. Katzman's other films like Giant Claw or uh, oh. Creature with the Atom Brain, those oh. are those are more the, well-known. The now, Werewolf. But The Werewolf... Is a lot but, better. Uh, but but Zombies is more, Zombies and more Towel is not as well-known, but I think it's a, a still a really fun one from him. All right. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to throw one out from 1960, Leech Woman. Oh yeah! Oh, yeah. I the used Leech to watch Woman. that. Oh, it great. used to be on it like always at two in the morning, and it's not the greatest movie ever made, but it was so scary to me. And it's the idea of this woman who is uh, an aging beauty, yeah, mm-hmm. Colleen who, Gray, yeah, who goes to this and there's this African. Um, does she go to this village or she anyway? There's a ceremony and she yeah. gets a ring that makes her uh, a leech woman. She, well, just she, takes, she witnesses like a ceremony where she sees a really aged right, pre- a priestess or whatever queen, become yeah, like a priestess. super hot young twenty year old exactly. Native, yeah. So she gets does she kill her at that point and get the ring? I, well, I think she start, she start yeah th- somehow she somehow steals she it or steals it. Or? But yeah. I, all her stuff is she ends up killing people and taking their blood because it doesn't last long. So she has to yeah, I think she has Keep, to stick it in the, the back pine, of a guy the pineal gland. Yeah, she's sticking the back of a guy. Is in, if you know horror films at all, the pineal gland, the most <laughs> important the gland in human. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Also known as the third eye. The, Great the double feature gland, with yeah. From Beyond. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but every every HP Lovecraft, you know, yeah. it's like pineal uh, gland. the pineal gland is so... It should be uh, a pineal gland festival. <laughs> you could just do a series, a show just on films with pineal gland. Pineal gland, gland. yeah. <laughs> nice yeah. topic. Fun with pineal glands. It's kind of, a, kind of a nasty little movie, though, because a, a Very, lot of Very, and it's black and white. Dying. It's a yeah. lot of, like, uh, dark. Darkness yeah, and, and uh, Grant Williams plays, uh, he's kind of sleazy. He, well, she has a younger uh, lawyer husband, something like that, and she's older than he is, but then she starts looking younger, and then he'll make yeah, comments but, like, oh, you you were looking so lovely yesterday, but she, plays like she her, starts to get like a little uh, wrinkles, yeah, and then yeah. has to get Well, yeah. she masquerades like as her niece when she's yes, young. Yes, when she's young. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and Gloria Talbot is the other but, actress in it. Who's, oh, I, I, love I, have Gloria not, I have not seen that love movie her. probably in 20 years, it's, it's but good. I it's swear, fun. it used to scare the hell out of me at night, Yeah. So here's one that you should love just for the title. Ah. From 1965, it's the science fiction horror film, The Earth Dies Screaming. Yeah. Awesome. No. How do you like that for a Matt, title? Uh, wow. That's another one the I don't Earth. know. This is directed by the great Terrence Fisher. Oh, who brought Terrence. Us oh yeah. The War of Classic, Dracula yeah. and Brides of Dracula and but, Curse of Frankenstein. But this is not a well-known one of his. This is though. not. Yeah, this is a black and white film. And the story is there's this gas attack mm-hmm. that kills most... Most of the people in the world, there are some remaining survivors, and what they find out is that this gas attack was launched by aliens, and mm-hmm. these aliens are the robots, mm-hmm. and the robots aren't the greatest robot design. They look a little Doctor Who-ish. There's a yeah. lot of wires yeah, and things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You could say, like, oh, is that from a microphone? Is that a- <laughs> Did you get that from a radiator and you glued it on? Okay. But what's great about these robots is when they kill you, then they can bring your body back to life. So now you're these zombies with these great opaque eyes. Oh, it's always yeah. always effective. Okay. Really effective. And what's nice about it, it's very well acted. Great cast. Uh, Willard Parker, Virginia Field, Dennis Price, who's in a lot of He's Hammer yeah. horror mm-hmm. films. And... 
done very sober, not too campy. A lot of genuine scare moments. Yeah, done mm-hmm. straight. Yeah. Done absolutely straight. Mm-hmm. And it's I think it's roughly about an hour and it just flies by. I think it has that great it's that great British sci fi feel to it. You yes. Know? Just something Everybody about just different. acting their asses off yeah, like yeah. you know, they might as well be in a costume drama. You know? <laughs> have, you, uh, have you seen that documentary? You know the uh, Mark Gaddis who was co oh, yes. Sherlock. Oh. Yeah. He's on Doctor Who League, League of Gentlemen. He's League of Doctor Gentlemen. League of Gentlemen, the greatest. He is a horror geek and hugely and he did a documentary series for the BBC called A History of Horror. Cool, history. I think it's like 2010. Right. And awesome. it basically, he goes through all this, we were talking about Hammer films, yeah. and, but he also talks about the Universal Monsters. Fun. And mm-hmm. He goes through everything. It's I think it's five part. I can't remember, but oh, cool. it's not like it's just a quick thing. He sits in a screening room and talks, and then they'll show clips from the film. Oh, wow. And it's we got to get him on our done. podcast. I know, really. <laughs> yeah. If we could get him on, it'd be oh, fantastic. He's, he's a flaw. Well, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, from the League of Gentlemen, first of all, that series. That's a horror that's series. That's a horror series. Yeah. Totally. Mm-hmm. It, that whole series is a horror series. And uh, speaking of uh, The Earth Died Screaming, Tom Waits appropriated the title for one of his a song on one of his albums back oh in the 90s. Oh, my gosh. You know, <laughs> speaking of which. Speaking of which. Speaking of which, Devo, ah. Island of Dr. Moreau. Well, yes. Are we not men? And I actually exactly. met them and I asked them about it just that to, was to make sure. inspiration. Because I remember seeing that. That is a creepy horror film that's very rarely seen. Now, wait a yeah, minute. That now, version. No, Island of Lost Souls. Uh, yeah. Right. Which yeah. Is yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what yes. I'm talking about. That's oh, the one. Charles Lawton. Charles yes. Lawton. And it's got a Bella Lugosi is the uh, my, my, my yeah, master. The, yeah. the Sayer of the Law. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that and that what was a movie. What is the law? What is the law? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Are we not men? <laughs> And, yeah, uh, bear man, yeah. Or whatever. Must, <laughs> must not kill. Yeah, and, and again, use those actual freaks in that. Uh, they did a yeah, mixture of a did. mixture yeah, of, yes. of makeup, yes, yes, yes. and also uh, people with human oddity. Right. I don't know people with I don't like deformities or, or know, know, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, right. But that's a really and that was a movie too that was very hard to see. You yes. could not see that forever. And then yes. the first time I did see it was on late night television. It might have been scenes from Night Flight, but you know <laughs> all that kind of stuff is. You'd see these scenes. You'd hear these references, or see the photos in famous movies. Yeah, famous yeah. monsters. Did, you would always, see always that. wanted oh, to see. And it Charles too. Lawton with that crazy little mustache. Yeah, you know? and yeah. he's so creepy in it. And uh, I who's saw the you woman dissecting a man. Panther Girl was I can't remember her name. So <laughs> yeah. Kathleen Burke. What year was that? Thirty two. Thirty two. Pre code. Yeah. So oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they can it's do a little stuff. racier. Yeah, a oh, racier yeah. and violent. perverse. Yes. Mm. Well, the twisted ideas of that film, and he played Charles Lawton is so great in it, and plays it so creepily and all that stuff. And it's the idea of yes. not really knowing science. So you're saying I can graft, much like we graft yeah. plants, <laughs> right. sure. yeah, grafting yeah. animal parts onto humans or <laughs> hey, vice versa. And it works. Hey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just, That's how good he is. Just slap, <laughs> just slap but, the skin of this hyena on this guy. Exactly. Now he's hyena man. So that, that definitely is an obscure horror film. And what's, Island what's, of what's Lost Souls Island of Lost Souls. And, and what I love about- made two times or three oh, times. Yeah, yeah, not, and none of them are that great. No, that's God. the best one. And what's great about Lawton's performance in that is that he chews scenery, but he does it in a very subtle way. It's mm-hmm. always, he's not yelling. It's always very- No, but when he does that Soft whip, and sinister. Yeah, the, the whip. whip later on. Yeah. And, and the yeah. house of and pain. Gets, that, yeah. Which is such a great, <laughs> the, that's the first time, I don't know if that appearance as a, as a term- Mm. ever appeared before in film. Right. Yeah, I don't no. know. No. But that term, the house of pain, I don't know if it's in the original there book. There was a bar. <laughs> no. well, I don't know if it's in the original Berlin. book. It may be in the original book. Oh, yeah, no, you know it's, de- it's, it's definitely all that it's stuff. Such it's such a it's, great it's, reference. It's, it's really loyal to the original story. H.G. Yeah. Wells. Yeah. Yes, H.G. Yeah. Wells. Yeah. One of my favorite movies of all time, actually. Really? Oh. You guys know that. Oh. A giant fan. It is yeah. a great I did not know yeah. that, yes. man. You can't, you can't fan. take your eyes off of Lawton. He's just so you really can't, I mean, for every single element, the acting, Lawton, of course, is the shining jewel in it. Sure. But, of course, all the makeup effects that yes. they do are really ahead of their but time. let me say, too, For that time. For that time. Yes. And I think they still still hold up to a greater or lesser degree Mm -hmm. to this day. Yeah, I agree. The other thing is, too, is that when you were first seeing that film, as well as Freaks, you would see such faded prints. And part of that was the transfer process of the nitrate films onto safety films. Sure. Those early sound films, they're always a little light. 
Right. Yes. And but we're seeing much better versions now than we ever saw. And now they oh, yeah. they can digitally clean up a lot yeah, of these things. Yeah, clean up these these things. And yeah. the latest, I think it's Criterion yeah, put Criterion out. Yeah, put an amazing oh, Blu-ray. Just a beautiful. I love Ray. Criterion. I mean, yeah. I've uh, been a fan of theirs. For, I was buying Criterion laser discs, as you, remember, you know, <laughs> But it, I mean, yeah. honestly, it's to amazing. our listeners, if you've never seen that one, Which, one, do not watch. Another one, one along those lines is West of Zanzibar. Uh, oh, my God. which is oh, a yeah. fantastic yeah. again. I don't know that one either. The West, silent oh, version, West. the silent one is fantastic, and that's Lon Chaney. Lon Chaney, and you must see that. Seen and it's it's West of Zanzibar. West, West of Zanzibar. Zanzibar. West of Zanzibar. And there is a sound version that says just as creepy with Walter Houston. Ah, Walter Houston's in it. It was made like two years after the silent one. You have to give us a plot rundown of that one. Okay, it is amazing. So it starts off with the film. You see this paraplegic who is acting as a witch doctor in darkest Africa. Uh, and he kind of has this horrible group of guys with him. He's a trader who trades ivory and things that the mm-hmm. natives bring in and, yeah. and buys booze and gives them you know liquor and stuff mm-hmm. and keeps them at bay by doing magic, mm-hmm. like literally magic, like magic tricks. Type yeah. of mm-hmm. Which they uh, all yeah, fall for. They, they right? all fall for as being he's got a special powers. Well, quarter in your ear. Exactly. Look at these rings. Exactly. And much similar to all of that early 30s, you know, uh, late 20s Africa. (laughs) Right, right. right. Sure, sure, sure. So, but it's brilliant. And he has, he believes he was wronged by a gentleman. He brings him back and what he has done is he took that man's daughter. (sighs) The guy had had an affair with his wife. And he took the daughter that came out of that. The wife died in childbirth, possibly. And he, what he did is sent, sent her to the worst whorehouses in Zanzibar to be, to be used. Oh. And returns her and presents her to that gentleman. And it is the cruelest. It's and then brutal. And especially, let me just say, Lon Chaney. Can we give away the twist? I, I don't no, think so. No, it's so, don't. I don't no. want to give it away. Let me just say, Lon Chaney is so brilliant. And if you haven't seen him in anything other than Phantom of the Opera, right? Do that. The unknown. We'll talk. The unknown's talk about another that in a one. Second. That's great. Yeah. But West of Zanzibar. I talked about the Unholy Three before. He did the silent Classic. and sound version of that. Right. Yeah. Can you tell me? Was that the only sound film that Lon Chaney did? He did another one where he played, uh, it was another one of those movies where he had more than one part. It was, uh, he played a Chinese guy in it. Oh, um, and I yeah. can't remember the name of but it. But that was very close to his it. death, right? Very close. Yeah. And he died of throat cancer. So you hear him in these movies and he's, you know. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but West of Zanzibar, definitely check that oh, out. And it's the twist, the twist ending. But it, it, it is a silent film. Uh, yes, I'll point and there's this out and the, but to if you our see, listeners. If you see the Walter Houston version, again, brilliantly done. Uh-huh. I wouldn't have any qualms about somebody seeing the Walter Houston version, which is it's like 27 and 31, maybe these two films. I know. do say though, Lon Chaney. Lon if Chaney. you haven't seen him, his facial expressions and the way he does this turn at the end of the film. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. I mean, he see, really was a great actor. Which again, can I go to quickly go back to the man who laughs? Okay. Because he's forced to have this smile that's been right. cut into him by a plastic surgeon. The look on his face. There's there's only a few moments in it where he has actual glee. Yeah, and the other thing is this huge smile and the saddest eyes you've yeah. ever seen, yeah. and that's what makes it so powerful. Right, and right. you watch it, and he finally, when he has actual joy for one moment in the film, when the blind girl, which again another <laughs> twist that's always in horror films, is the blind girl who's in love with the ugly. The, the thing uses it in the in Fantastic Four. Sure, it's that device of if you have a horrible, right, right. Eye, you know, disfigurement. If you find a f- blind girl, you can find happiness. Where's yeah, the yeah. hot? <laughs> Blind chick bar. <laughs> but uh, once you cure it, it would have completely go, yeah. changed my high school years. That would have helped so much. Uh, yes. Wow. But uh, and now you yeah. you touched upon the unknown. Yes. Give us a little one of that too. The unknown again. It's a it's a woman with an oddity. Joan Crawford. Very Joan Crawford. Very young. Very very young. beautiful. Very beautiful. Uh, she is the love interest that. Is the unrequited love in the unknown? Lon Chaney is a armless knife thrower in the circus, and she is a she does horse tricks. Right. You know? mm-hmm. Okay, and um, she though is in love with again the strong man, uh, but she has a v- strange phobia of not being touched. 
she doesn't like to be touched, so she's very comfortable with Lon Chaney with no arms. Uh-huh. <laughs> but you come to find that Lon Chaney... So this film stars my wife? <laughs> uh, I tease, I kid. You come to find that Lon Chaney, it's a gaff, it's a fake. He's, uh, he's <gasps> yeah. strapped up his arms. Yeah. No. So just... But he has a deformity as well. No, no, no. He's just a normal guy. He's a normal guy who Correct. has... Who has the double thumb or something? It's maybe, a way that maybe they... Maybe he does have oh a Oh, my thumb. God. Come wow. on, guys. Yeah, Get yeah, the yeah. story I'm straight. You, there's so many levels. I'm telling you, okay, this is there's a, a lot this of levels fucked up movie. Okay, okay yeah. just, just get back to, to get back to Lon Chaney, though. But the, the arm thing, it's it's a ruse. It's not... It it's is not, a ruse. Yeah. It is a ruse. So he takes it off. We see him take it off. We see him stretch. Right. And he, it's part of... He thinks, though, if he truly does have no arms... Right. But she'll love him. Oh, see, oh, so, I, perfect man. I hear where this is. I yeah. think I know where this he is going. He literally has the strong man's act as he's holding two horses or something yeah. like that, right? And Lon Chaney makes it where he is being held by the two horses and gets his arms pulled off. No. So and then he recovers. So romantic. He recovers. <laughs> She still doesn't love him. Oh, uh, you know, oh, you know what? He was women, a murderer. Right? You're right. He did have two thumbs. That's also part of it. It's yeah. not just for love. Because that's how they can, because he was uh, he was guilty of a, crime. of a crime of killing, of throwing a knife and, and killing a woman. And that's how they can identify him. Oh, By I the see. two thumbs. So he wow. figures if he takes off his arms, not only will he have the love of his life, but he'll also be, un- so he cannot be convicted. crazy, that right. story. Yeah. Right. So in the scene where he's getting his arms ripped off and the horses, it's like Ben-Hur. Yeah. yeah, you know, you're going to the trotting oh horses on God. these treadmills. Yeah, and they're literally. This is not a fake. This isn't a special effect. There's literally two giant white draft horses on treadmills running on either side with this like control like lever. Unbelievable. And it's just the craziest thing. I mean, <laughs> the world of real effects and, and so. Just if I could just ask a goofy question, though, you were saying he's he's a knife thrower, and he's in. <laughs> yeah. So so he if he doesn't have arms or he throws he, with so, his feet. So he taught himself how to throw no, knives with his feet. No, right? is yeah. that what he does? And it's yeah. fantastic. The whole. I mean, Cheney's ability. Uh, what's the other one where he's the faith healer? There's the one where he the doesn't have any body. Lo- the penalty. Is that oh, the one where he's one the no crime? Legs. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. the crime lord. Yeah, he is one. the crime lord. who's secret leg crime lord, but he's got he fakes he, that he has no legs. I can't remember in that one if he fakes it. I think or, that was a fake. Oh, okay, and then there's also the one where he fakes the twisted body. Uh, I or so, go back and watch every Chaney's whole career. He's like faking the penalty. He have arms. <laughs> he's faking his yeah, it's, it's, it is amazing yeah. how many you films, should. but so many of those are available. Yeah, that they the man who available. laughs. Right. That's another one. I, I, I'm sorry, not the man who laughs. He has he who laughs that's, or something the, like that. He who gets slapped. That's yes. Wow. That was the that's first. Where he's the MTM clown film. Right. He right. who that gets was where slapped. Metro. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Metro had merged with Goldwyn, Goldwyn yeah. and they became MGM. That was their first film released. He was a huge star for MGM. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. And if you ever watch, as a kid, the first thing I saw of his before seeing him in other things was the uh, the movie, the biopic. Oh, oh um, uh, man, man of a thousand man faces. Of man thousand, of a thousand yeah. faces. James, James, Cagney. James Cagney. Yeah. With James Cagney, and they had James Cag- <laughs> James Cagney at one point. Uh, I got no legs. I love it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he's he's got <laughs> this is a cheap shot. Come exactly. to the world, man. <laughs> but but uh, his manager is played by Mr. Howell. Oh, Jim, Jim Backus. Jim Backus. <laughs> so Jim Backus <laughs> comes to the back lot at Universal to find Cheney to tell him something. And Cheney's in this Madagascar pirate makeup where yeah. he's done this thing. And so <laughs> he comes up looking for him. And Aslan Cheney's sitting there and he's peeling an egg. And he goes, have you seen Lon Chaney? You know, that's Jim Backus. And I uh, go, ah, uh, no, Mr. Chaney, he not here. And <laughs> it's just this horrible thing. And it's my favorite scene in the whole movie. Oh, that's man. your favorite scene? <laughs> because it's so bad. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Wow. Other than, other than handing the makeup kit and putting the chalk junior on his, oh, on that, his makeup. That made, me, that made me a little emotional when I saw wow. that. You but just watch it, it again. Because then you go, <laughs> really? Really, Lon Chaney Jr.? Well, they never had that name until after your dad died. That's that, true. Well, yeah, yeah, and had a very, very tough relationship, from what uh, I hear. Yeah, right, right. With dad. Yeah, right. but we'll, we'll save that for another yeah. show. Because okay. this, this is about horror All obscure. right, who's, who's up next? I'll, so, I'll, I got one. Go for it. I'm going to bring us all the way up to 2015 with a movie what? that- What? Yeah, it's a movie that already has kind of a cult following, but I, I suspect that a lot of our listeners have not seen it. 
It is a horror western, and it's called Bone Tomahawk. And Bone with, um, Tomahawk. With, um, Kurt uh, Russell. Kurt Russell, yeah. Kurt Russell. And it's extremely graphic. It's actually kind of a straightforward Western in story, but it's got some really violent graphic elements. And Matt, you've seen this. I have. You're not as big of a fan as I am of Here, it. Here's the thing with that movie. That is a movie that as I'm watching it, like I really want to like it. And I love everyone in it. The acting... There's nothing you can say about the acting. Everybody is great. I love Kurt Russell in anything. He's always good. Yeah. And uh, who's the guy from The Conjuring and... uh, Patrick Wilson? Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Everything is great. It is so goddamn slow. You know... For no reason. Matt, the thing is, Westerns tend to be slow. But you... No, you don't have to... Real Bravo is not slow. It's over two hours, too, I think, right? The Searchers is slow. No. No. The Searchers is... Has so the, much yeah, character I, stuff. Uh, slow is not is never a good excuse. There's listen, never listen, a good listen. excuse for slow. Well, listen, listen. And, then, happens, and then, but then you can't say the t- that genre of film is slow. No, I'm no, pl- it doesn't I'm, work that I'm, way. By the t- <laughs> I'm playing defense here, and the fact is I, I was never bored. I never thought By the time slow. you get to the end, too, you didn't feel like that was kind of like, wow, we went all this way just for this? I was, <laughs> I was for two hours and 20 minutes, I was riveted. Now, I, didn't I will say I don't dislike it mm-hmm. oh because i i do oh. i do i was engaged yeah. oh. all the way through because yeah. the actors all, were so good all, all of it was acting and yeah i'm not saying the 15 minutes couldn't have been cut but i enjoyed every minute of it i was on the edge of my seat i also don't think it's that good of a story i think it's i think it's a kind of a lame story oh see i it went i just i What's, loved it give, give us the basic premise it's, of the um, plot kurt russell is the sheriff of a town and there is a uh, a nearby band of indians who are i'd say that they're so rogue that they're almost like prehistoric they're cave indians basically they're not like any other tribe and they're extremely violent and they live by their own rules and they kidnap kurt russell's deputy and a local nurse and the nurse's husband what years does this take place in? Like eighteen oh, eighties kind yeah, of thing. Western yeah, yeah. days. I, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, yeah. So Kurt Russell leads a search party along with his uh, secondary deputy, who's Richard Jenkins, who's a great character actor. Everyone's great in this movie. Everyone really is great, without and a doubt. There weren't that many nurses around in eighteen eighties, right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> there That's were a few. Definitely, there were. I mean, they, they live in a around, cave. Yeah. They need a nurse. They, they had them in the <laughs> Civil War and stuff, but you know, okay. The thing is that they go on a search for the deputy and the nurse, and it doesn't. Is go... Is this a carry-on movie? Because they would have nurses. <laughs> I was. I can't <laughs> believe lot. you read my fucking mind. Uh, I'm telling you, I was thinking oh, like, nurse. if they had yeah. done this as a carry-on movie, it would have been better. Um, I loved it. And I know that there is a following for it already, but it is I know not, is. it's not a, like a household name title. Well, if you're going to talk about uh, obscure horror films that have come out recently, yeah. Southbound, Southbound, which is an anthology horror film. Mm-hmm. I've seen it twice. With Dana Gould. Sc- Dana Gould's in it. Hey, Davey Johnson hey, is in the same. Dana Gould, that. friend of the show. Friend yes, of the right. show. So, yeah. uh, friend, friend of us. Also, Mather Zickel is in it, does a great piece. It's basically this anthology where it follows a character, like a character will have something happen to them, and then you go to the next character off of that type of thing. So it's oh, very smoothly done. Very it opens with the ending of the <laughs> film. I think three or four different directors who are all very good at the genre. And uh, really well done, and you will probably only see that on either streaming or video. I absolutely yeah. want to see that. Uh, Southbound, I highly recommend it. Great. Let's just, I'll say this. It starts off with these guys in a pickup truck running from demons. <laughs> so, Fantastic. If you so want it there. Every movie. Yeah. Right. Want I to like it already. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Totally watchable. Perfect, like a classic 60s anthology, but modern, up to date, obviously. I would like to mention within those anthologies mm. that I loved all those. Tales of the Crypt. Oh, yeah. We which is oh, kind of sure. an obscure. We're, we're, yeah. we're yeah, fans yeah, of all yeah, that, yeah. All that yeah. stuff. The, of course, the first one uh, was, uh, what was that? Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. The, well, oh, Torture Garden is the first one, right? Dead of Night. Well, Dead of oh, Night is no, yeah. Dead, yeah, of Dead of Night. Night. Right? Because yeah. yeah. they come in and it's a, a dream he has every yeah, year. Yeah, he says it's yeah. a dream. And that's also got an early ventriloquist yeah. doll. We've talked Talked yeah. about, oh, yeah. We talked about the that first on one. Yeah. show. Yeah, that yeah. is a that is a great yeah. one. That, that, that's we love that. Like, no. The old dark house, which I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but it's like it's got a uh, Boris Karloff. Yeah, Boris Karloff. Uh, James Whale. Great. James Whale. Yeah. Yeah. James Whale. Yes. James Whale. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's the classic on a dark and stormy night goes to a house. 
and you think it's somebody killing. You think yeah, it's, it's a it's like a murder <laughs> mystery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boris Karloff. I think it's this film right after Frankenstein. I think yeah. so. Because they yeah. give him a yeah. role where he doesn't talk. Right, right. But also, God, the Black Cat. Mm, oh, black cat. Oh. Uh, I mean, well, it that's talks not obscure. About, that's yeah, like yeah, a, that's, that's a, yeah. a classic. Yeah, yeah, it is, I agree, yeah. it's a classic. But you couldn't see that when I was a kid at all. I mean, you'd see. We, we had a thing called I, creature features. Yeah, we, yeah uh, Northern California. I, I think they did show that. Yeah, I yeah, saw. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember yeah, that one. Yeah. I because I I remember that being one of my favorite yeah. of the non monster universal. Yeah, right. No, I'm right, with right. you. I'm with you. Yeah. On but it was one. very a Kirk much Hammett that, favorite. By the way, that's right. That is Who? true. Kirk, Kirk Hammett, Hammett from Metallica. Oh, I thought you said Kirk. Huge Cameron. no, huge. I don't think I Kirk Cameron Kirk loves them. Kirk Cameron loves them. Why would you? Kirk Cameron, Kirk Cameron, friend of the show. Cameron. Friend of. The, when are we getting him he, on? No, no, really no, 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 no. He's uh, not coming on the show. Uh, uh, so tell us about your yeah. Left Behind movies. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to bring up another one, please. A racer head. Oh, which oh, I don't know. Really. Well. Obscure? Obscure. I, what, it well, it was very cult. obscure. I think it was a cult film. Yeah. I don't know. All right. It's I mean, it's it, really well it's known cult. in our disturbing. circles. Really disturbing. Yeah. In our circles, hugely well known. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm talking about the average out there. You talk about kids today. I don't no, think that yeah, many kids today would no, know Eraserhead. True. When we were growing up, Eraserhead was playing midnight. It was yeah. only a midnight. Yeah. If you ask at, at art m- houses. millennials yeah, today, they're not going to know from Eraserhead. It's a very avant-garde. Early it, it David Lynch. It introduced it to David Lynch. Yes. You know, right. it introduced the world to David Lynch. Yeah. Right. Before Elephant Man. It's extremely interesting. I don't know interesting. how. Interesting. It's disturbing, man. It is it's disturbing. disturbing. I can't. I can't. I'm just telling you about the stuff with the funny? underneath at moments. Yes. We did. We did laugh at it. sick and twisted, Sean. Yeah, but but there's like the, the little girl of the radiator, the Betty, yeah. Betty Boop thing. Yeah. And yeah. I, I don't know. The creature things that would crawl out from stuff. and Yeah, the chicken. The baby. I don't know. Yes, there's the baby is horrible. Yeah. So I don't know how much I like that movie as much as respect it. We were yeah. fascinated yeah. by it. I don't know yeah. if we loved it or anything, but, no, but you're right. we're it's, fascinated by it. And it's definitely it's, something we're seeing. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. I think I, so. No, I think it's worth seeing. If you've yeah, never but seen it, 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 it... But I want to point, if you haven't seen it, listeners, it, it is a disturbing film. It's yeah. not, you yeah, know, you no, don't come is. out of there it's going, hey, movie. you yeah. know, yeah. No, it's not a date film. Yeah, it's not a feel-good movie. No. It's an art film. Like, hey, you're with your... very dark. You're with your girlfriend. Hey, we may have you know, get married, have kids one day. If you this, it's such a. No. This unlike is, I think those, that's when I wanted to stop having kids. Uh, like all horror films. <laughs> unlike all those other David Lynch movies that are feel good movies. This that's is true. Right. Small yeah. and Drive makes me feel good, but for all for the wrong reasons. You know, an Elephant Man is it's uplifting. You know, yeah, it's, it's, you that's know, true. I mean, yeah, it's a very true. good point. Right, but yeah. it's not your typical David Lynch movie. Yeah. Either. I'm going to go way off the grid, please. Ooh, okay, shit. this is something from. Japan, yeah. oh. our favorite country, oh. aside Crazy. from this one, and they so they're not known for horror. Well, <laughs> oh, uh, I'm joking. Uh, you jokey, <laughs> I jokey. I didn't say I jokey. I said I'm, I think uh, okay. you said I jokey. Oh, okay. I think it works better that way. Matt, what is the movie? The movie is well. First of all, let me just point out Please. that this is a movie that is. Based on the common writer superhero Tokusatsu TV series that started in the early seventies, mm-hmm. right. and common writer is a superhero that is basically a cyborg mm-hmm. that turns against its evil masters and becomes a superhero. Right. Oh. So this series has been going from the seventies till right now. <laughs> Each series is another incarnation of Common Rider, of little, this character. It's a little like Doctor Who that way. Kind of, yes, very similar. Oh, does he have a rebirth type of thing uh, in a different sort form? Of. These are different, as opposed- Does he have a different form every Well, year? as opposed to Doctor Who, where it's kind of supposed to be the same guy, right, right. Common Rider are different people, but they're all sort of related to this general family. Kind of like along the lines of Ultraman. There's this Ultra right. family. Oh, okay. all right. Anyway, so in 1993, they did a movie, and this was the first Common Rider I ever saw. Okay. Mm. Was this the, f- the first theatrical? It was a theatrical film? movie, and what they would do is they would put out a sort of a package of films for kids to see. Okay. It was part of that, but it was also part, I think they also did like a pay-per-view thing too, because I believe it was like a um, anniversary or something for Common Rider. So this movie is called Common Rider Zio, and it is such a weird movie. It is got to be like an hour tops like mm-hmm. running Z, length. Letter Z, letter Z-O, O. Z-O, Kamen Rider Z-O. 1993, 
And so the plot goes like this. There's this guy who is a lab assistant of Dr. Mochizuki. <laughs> and Mochizuki is experimenting with this thing called the neo-organism, okay. which is like this yeah. artificial organism that he's raising to have consciousness genetically engineering. And he experiments with his lab assistant. This guy turns into this sort of hybrid, and they always like to do this with Kamen Rider. They always like, it's like half insect, half man. Well, this yeah. guy's sort of half grasshopper, half man. <laughs> wow. And he's got superpowers, and he has a motorcycle, and he is, in a, he is so disturbed by being changed into this organism that he runs off, goes into a coma for years. The doctor continues working on these neo-organisms yeah. and creates this thing that breaks away from the master and develops its own programming. Okay. Very evil, wants to take over the world, becomes this thing called Doros. Doros is- <laughs> Doros. The, Doros. Okay. Doros is this creature that kind of looks like, you've heard of the Giver? Uh, right. Yes. The Giver, yes. the yes. anime. Yeah. And, sure, sure, you know, sure. He, it's sort of a cross between the Giver and like the alien from- Alien. The movie Alien. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, it's and MacGyver. This, and MacGyver, <laughs> yes. So does he come up with inventions, like from everyday household items? He does. At one point, he's just this ball okay. of like, energy, and he lands into this junkyard yeah. and builds his body out of parts. Okay. So in a lot of ways- That would be great in another film. <laughs> <laughs> but you haven't seen this film. This, I haven't. This movie haven't. is- This is for kids. Okay. And it's so fucking dark. This thing- So now it's chasing after this- this son of Dr. Mochizuki. Who okay. hasn't done his homework? Who hasn't done anything <laughs> wrong at all. Okay. All right. This creature, Doris, is going after the kid, and now Kamen Rider Zio is activated, comes up, and has to protect this kid. Now, is that the grasshopper one? That's the grasshopper <laughs> yeah, yeah. guy, yeah. Okay. And so within this movie, again, under an hour, there is practical effects. Okay. There's wonderful creature designs. Okay. Kamen Rider Zeo looks beautiful. Doros looks amazing. There's a point where the neo-organism sucks them into a pocket universe uh -huh. where they have to fight this crazy creature that's like part woman part spider that is stop motion animated wow. no way yes. you and never see that in no yes. no and this is 1993 and it's so good it's such a tight fast moving little film oh wow. man, man i'm not familiar with i'm this. telling you and there are other creatures there's like a bat guy that in the beginning kidnaps the sun okay and Throughout the movie, Kamen Rider has, is basically just defending this child. Right. Wow. But it is so great. You can get it on eBay. You can also, I'm sure, find it on YouTube. Cool. I don't want to give out too much because there right. are so many bizarre, Twist. awesome visuals in this okay. thing. Wow. So, and it's like they threw the kitchen sink with everything. Stop right, motion, right. practical effects, CGI. Yeah. Yeah. Superheroes, motorcycles, so Matt, violence. Matt, Matt, this is, it's called karate. It, it, Matt, it's common Rider Zio from 1993. 1993. Based on a true story. Based, <laughs> Matt, based on my journals. No, Matt, if I get it, though, I mean, am I going to see uh, like uh, an English translation yeah. or well, is, it, I, is it dubbed? What is if it? you got it on yeah. eBay, Matt's going to stand next to you. I will explain no. it to you. <laughs> What's it be subtitled? What, the versions that I have now that you can get on eBay are subtitled. I'm sure you can find a subtitled version on YouTube. But when I first saw this, it was from a Laserdisc with... Nothing. Oh. And I went, I love this. Yeah. And you didn't know it's, what was. I figured it out. There's Sometimes a guy. It's even better hey, it seems one. like the grasshopper guy is protecting that kid <laughs> okay, from yeah. the evil guy. It yeah. is for kids. Yeah. Story wise, pretty simple, but I'm telling you, it is. It is like a birthday cake to everything we love. Well, wow. there's a the idea of the the Japanese are always willing to have a nice story for everything. Like there's the first failure, and that you know they're never like a straight path uh -huh. for these characters. Like the idea that he's in a coma. I mean, that's so <laughs> right. well, it's like Japanese re rebirth. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. It's such a Japanese concept as opposed to an American film. It wouldn't be that. He gets bit by a spider at the he's beginning. A superhero. If you need him out of the coma, have him wake up at the beginning of the film. You know? <laughs> yeah. And this grasshopper thing, I mean, the whole insect meld with human, that's been going on is since the 70s. Is it a grasshopper's <laughs> face or is it a grasshopper? No, it's a it, human it, face. It's sort of armor. 
It's armor that's okay. reminiscent of an insect. Okay. And that has been something that has... They've done that a lot. Well, in, and that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially with Common Rider, that has gone from the 70s all the way. I mean, they've deviated from it in more recent incarnations, but that has stayed with it almost all the way. Since we're on Japan, I, I know it's not my turn, but can I jump in with oh, one? Go for it. This there are no is... more turns. <laughs> As opposed to a one-hour uh, show, this is a total of seven and a half hours. It's a trilogy. It's called 20th Century Boys. It's, oh, uh, I know that one. I don't know that it's one. Based, yes. It's based on a manga. It's from Oh, two- no, it's a different film. <laughs> 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 it's from 2008, 2009, and it borrows a little bit from Stephen King's It, in that it, there's a, a group of boys that have like a clubhouse in the late 60s, and one of the boys turns out to be an evil cult leader who years later is going to plot to overthrow. You gave this to me. I did, yes. <laughs> and you still haven't watched it. I watched the first 20 minutes and loved it so much that I wanted to save it for <laughs> Carrie and oh. never got through it all. Yeah, <laughs> it's long. I mean, it's it's an investment. It's seven and a half hours. But I it's, loved it's it. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And it's something I don't think a lot of people know about. But 20th it's, Century Boys? 20th Century Boys. I, yeah, I don't know this, James. It's It was produced by Toho. And one of the really fun things about it is that, well, for one thing, you really, really root for these kids. They grow up, and then they're all like finding each other again to fight. It's a lot like it. So it's an epic tale. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and they're saga. all yeah. trying to get one step of, ahead of this cult leader before he can end the world. And, I mean, it's very long. They exist in our world with a lot of the Japanese pop culture references as they actually exist. So there's references to like Ultraman and superheroes like Mirror Mask and Inframan. And Godzilla even makes a cameo in, no. in an insert shot because it's Toho and that they could just put in a shot of Godzilla. Well, is it is it is like no, it's it's not part of the story. It's you more gotta fill like, seven hours. <laughs> but it's, it's, we're short a minute. It's, it's get some Godzilla footage. It's great fun. I'm actually looking forward to seeing it a second time. Wow! Uh, so there so, you go. So I, I was date, intrigued. The date, the date on that, great. James. Glad to hear it. The, the date on this: two thousand eight, two thousand nine. It's available subtitled. I don't think it's available dub, but I think you probably get it on Netflix. Love it. Great. All right, I got one. All right, Sean. Uh, this is a, lay it on me. This is a great uh, like Euro horror from the seventies. This is called The Devil's Nightmare. Oh, The Devil's wow, Nightmare. That's got to be a bad nightmare. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's kind of a strange time. 1971. It's kind of like a... <laughs> is the nightmare just like Christmas? And... <laughs> yeah. No, no that's, oh, really? that's Matt's nightmare. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Kind of a strange title, but misleading title. It really doesn't mean anything, but it's... Uh, oh, it's what? Kind of like, <laughs> what? It's kind of There's like, no um, devil? No, there, there's a devil. Oh, a really okay. Cool devil. Now we're talking. It's I'm like back. A, it's like a Belgian, a Belgian slash Italian production. These tourists are on a tour bus, and the bus breaks down. There's seven tourists, and they have to stop at this like old European castle. And in this castle, there's this really hot chick. Who <laughs> <lives there. laughs> Is right. that how she's billed? <laughs> yeah, um, and basically, we find out is that all the seven tourists kind of represent uh, the seven deadly sins. Oh. And oh. and the uh, the woman, the seductive woman, is played by Erica Blanc, who is this. Uh, Super hot actress who was in a lot of movies in the 70s, like a lot of Euro horror stuff, like The Night Evelyn Came Out of the Grave, and hmm. a lot of stuff. And she's great, and she's a really striking, beautiful actress, and she's a succubus. And she seduces all... The best all, kind. She, <laughs> Wait, a suck. A she puts a suck. Succubus. So she, uh, <laughs> she kind of seduces all the they tourists. Female, male, yeah, yeah, yeah. Think, uh, <laughs> she, she seduces all the tourists into... Uh, Kind of enacting their vice at the moment when she kills them. Oh, okay. Like the guy who uh, drives the bus is like, he's always eating, so he's gluttony. There's this you know, woman who's like obsessed with like finding treasure and gold, and you know, she, she drowns in gold dust. And, <laughs> and wow. when the succubus shows her true form, it's this really freaky uh, kind of demon makeup on Erica Blanc. It's really cool. There's this also kind of this shady character who, who's living there who's a, the devil. Mm-hmm. A really cool actor named Daniel Emil Fork. He was uh, he was in uh, City of Lost Children. He's a very kind of strange, gaunt-looking guy. And there's a priest who's been kind of seduced by it too. So it kind of has exorcist kind of elements to it. But it's very it's very sleazy. He's got a lot of 
You well, like the sleeves, don't you? <laughs> he does like he does. How many like times he said sleeves? Yeah. Well, let me just say though, that, too. It's that, like Euro trash kind of fuzz guitar. When soundtrack. we were young guys, that was some of the raunchiest stuff on was horror movies too. Yeah, yeah, the, right. Part of the appeal was the drive-in nudity. Oh yeah, especially yeah. from Europe. And yeah. this movie, oh my God, this movie yeah. has the obligatory lesbian scene too. Oh, yeah. oh so, my! I'm yeah. telling you, I I couldn't have gotten out of puberty without vampire lovers. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But it's really, it's just kind of like a quintessential like Euro trash, really moves well, lots of clever killings and and it's just, it's really fun. It's a really good atmospheric Euro horror film. And what's the date on that one, Sean? It was 1971. That was 71. I have not seen that. It's a good one. No. Does anybody remember Track of the Vampire? Uh, Yeah. Well, Track of the Vampire was a, it took many forms. It was also called. uh, Something else. Yeah. Yeah. Bloodlust or. uh, Blood something. But it was along those lines, you know, they were showing it on like matinee Saturday on television, (laughs) black and white (laughs) vampire movie. But it, it was about this sort of bachelor who was what sta- country? I'm sure so- this is. I think this is American. It was, American? It was oh, low yeah. budget American, but he was um, he was staking out a, like a modeling agency, and he was going. Oh, that's fantastic. He was going <laughs> after models who were doing these poses for sculptors yeah, and w- sketch artists. William, and- William Campbell played the uh, the artist. It's kind of a little bit like Dementia Thirteen. Wow. It has yeah. that feel yeah. to it. Why would if you were a vampire? Yeah. Why would you go after models? <laughs> They're like. You know, 100 pounds each? <laughs> there isn't oh, that much blood. That's you true. bring yeah. up a good point. Well, right. if you're going to bite a neck, I think you want a sexy neck. I, guess. I would know. I'd true. go to a hometown buffet and just... <laughs> But that's why I thought. <laughs> that's why I thought that Thirty Days of Night, the the vampire taking place in the Arctic Circle, was such a brilliant idea. It's a great yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Based off a of comic, uh, the yeah, comic book is very entertaining. Yeah, yeah, yes, right. so. but no, you're right. Track Steve of the Vampire. Niles, yeah. Track of the Vampire was kind of. I think Roger Corman took the movie, added scenes, right? And made it. It was called Bloodbath. Yeah, and there's a couple other versions too. When I was like, uh, you know, nine years old watching, I was like, holy mackerel, these girls are sexy. Holy shit. (laughs) Holy mackerel. (laughs) I just see see young James. Holy mackerel. My vocabulary was more limited (laughs) back then. (laughs) Yeah, it kind of had like. Sweet (laughs) Christmas. Jiminy Christmas. I I, did say holy mackerel. Come on. Hey. Gosh, yeah, cut the guys uh, jumping Jehoshaphat. Gosh darn it! Those look at those cones. Sexy. All right, all right. <laughs> I all was right. regressing to nine years old. What can I tell? I love it. No, it's great. So maybe let's just do like just one little quick, maybe a lightning round. Maybe uh, I got lightning your last. Round. Uh, can I throw this out? To please. See how you think? Because I know a lot of people who are familiar with this film, but Henry's Portrait of a Serial Killer. Mm, that's a good one. Kind yeah. of obscure. But it's so so scary and brilliant too. I mean, it's, I love you know, that movie. I think it's uh, really. Is it obscure? That's what I was I wondering. I think it I, I, for horror fans, I would say not. But still, if yeah. you if you haven't seen it, it's I know one it did not ever do that well theatrically. I don't think it rented even that highly. I think it's considered, isn't it considered kind of a little classic. cult classic well, it's, now? It's the movie also no. that put Michael Rooker kind of on the map, I think, right? I mean, yeah, he definitely really became yeah. more better known after that movie. Yeah, but it's guy. never mentioned anymore in terms of now he's kind of had that second career. Right. Uh, and then the other, his co-star just died recently. He was in Guardians of the Galaxy, Michael Rooker. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, nobody ever says from Portrait of, you know what I mean? Right. It's never yeah. Well, horror fans, I'll bet do. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, I think that it is kind of a cult classic. Especially uh, horror fans of a certain age. Yes, right. If that horror was the fans th- of a certain yeah, age. Yeah. <laughs> that should be the title of a show. <laughs> that should be the title right. of a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> James? A lot of people have actually seen this, so it's not that obscure. Oh, it's wait a, a minute. Oh, oh shit. shit. Come on. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Boy, holy hey. shit. Go ahead. Go ahead. I didn't it, I mean, holy, holy mackerel. mackerel. <laughs> holy holy. <laughs> but it might be obscure to horror fans because it's not strictly a horror movie, but it's, it's, it's a documentary. It's a rock romantic comedy. <laughs> it's a documentary with horrific overtones. It's called Blackfish. You guys heard of this? Yes, but that's not horror. Uh, you know what? I've seen Blackfish now three times, and the more I see it, the more I'm aware that it is. It I is, haven't seen it. it What's is, Blackfish? But it's it's a documentary familiar. about how horrible it, the treatment of, of killer, of, whales. killer whales is. But okay, well, what? The, wait a no, minute. No, 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 no. Way off. Wait, wait no, 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 no. What? No. Listen, it is three the, times. The first time I saw it, I just followed it as okay. This is a, a straightforward telling about how the. Killer whales in captivity doesn't work because they tend to attack their trainers because they get all frustrated and bent out of shape. Because they're yeah, they're not in their natural habitat. Right, like chimps. The second time, bingo. I, the second time I saw the name it, name of my chimp. I'm listening to it. And I was like, holy mackerel! There's this like Jaws music. There are no playing. mackerels in the film. <laughs> <laughs> in this film, there are mackerels, but there's, there's this Jaws music that starts playing when the whales are about to attack their trainers. Okay, that just... 
<laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, listen. Feel no, no, no. Listen, listen, listen. All right, okay. It is the way that it's edited, the way that it's put together, is extremely effective as a documentary and also as propaganda that happened to work because it changed the way that SeaWorld is now operating. Before, okay, whatever that's worth. But the way that it's edited and the way that these attack scenes on the trainers, which are actually documentary footage, the way it's put together, the way that it's scored, the overall effect is actually horrific. It's a little bit like watching a snuff film. And it's oh, very effective that James. way. A I'm whale serious. snuff film. You I'm How many snuff films have you watched? <laughs> you can send your angry letters to James Gonis. <laughs> I'm also bringing it up. Of, I'm also bringing it up because it's just a really good documentary. So there you go. Well, I'm not wow. arguing that it's a. I, 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 I don't know if it's that obscure either because it's been on. A, you, I can't believe you guys haven't seen it. It was on like 20 no, times. I had to be reminded of I, what, I, what I did. What it was. I did. I did see it, and you I, saw it. I did. I did. I didn't see it three times. But you didn't see it as a horror film, no, did you? No, <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I, I think no. Maybe that's. Yeah, I mean, more scared straight. It's not a horror film. It's. There is a scene the making of, of a candidate. If you very <laughs> there, there there is footage of a killer whale being masturbated into a cup, and that is something that you cannot unsee. Okay, I I will see that in my nightmares. Seriously, sometimes wow, you have just argue. expanded <laughs> wow. what your nightmares, the parameters are. of what a horror film is now. <laughs> wow. We're going to include parameters. every film that has somebody masturbating. Into a cup. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole episode. A, yeah. <laughs> the topic is masturbating into a cup. No, wow. no. Okay. no. Okay, well, that's... Wow, all right. Sean? All right, Free Willy. No! no. <laughs> no it's kidding. horrific when they jumps over the thing. <laughs> See, look, look, look. Here's, the, here's the thing that bugs me about this, though. I'm sorry. You know, James, it's, it's not it's not obscure. That's the thing. You well, know, so, you know you several see, titles no, no, that we talked about really aren't obscure. No, 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 no but this rules, one in particular. James. No, <laughs> listen, this, uh, no, no. I listen. I, if you want to call it a horror film, I okay, I'll give you that. But, James, just the fact that... It was so popular. It was. It was. It did its, its job. A, uh, it, it's industry. not obscure. Yeah. Yeah. Let yeah. me let me put it this way: If we are categorizing it as a horror film, which I am trying to do, then it's obscure because it's not automatically <laughs> classified as a horror film. <laughs> all right, Sean. Can you, Sean? Can you can you uh, take right. us out of this, please? So the English patient yeah. is no. actually a very obscure horror film. Well, he is burned. <laughs> See, okay, okay. Right, Sean, you know, please. Phantom of the please. Opera. All right, I got one for you that is pretty obscure, I think. <laughs> 1973, very low budget, Warlock Moon. Okay, that's uh, an obscure that's horror. Obscure. Uh, <laughs> never heard of obscure. it. No. I never okay. heard of it either. Don't know uh, it. Very low budget movie with uh, Laurie Walters from Eight is Enough. Yes. And, and the Herod Experiment. Yes. Oh, very yeah. cute. The Herod Doesn't Experiment. wear a bra. Yeah. Oh. Um, she's a female student. Who, of course she uh, is. And she meets up with a young Joe Spano. From uh, Hill Street Blues, really? Yes. Yeah. Uh, they kind of they kind of meet cute, and they go driving in the countryside, and they come across this old abandoned uh, resort spa, this creepy old building. It's all abandoned, but then they find this like little old lady living there. <laughs> and great. she and she's, she's getting tells, sexier all, all the time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and she tells them like about this kind of weird history of the place, and there are these deaths here. They're supposed to be ghosts haunting this Sounds place. Like an episode of Funky Phantom. <laughs> yeah, and, that was a good show. <laughs> Talk That's about horror. horror. That's horror. And she gives her she gives them some tea, and and like <laughs> the, the tea is a kind of drug that she starts like oh. getting sleepy. Anyway, so like she wants to leave. They leave, and they, you know and then. They decide to go back because Joe Spano says, "Hey, you know, I'm a, I'm a young, young journalist. I want to like do a story about this place." So they go back, oh and there's no the, the old woman's not there anymore. And it turns out that the old woman is part of this whole satanic cannibalistic cult, and they're right, they, I'm back. They're uh, they want Lori Walters for this ritual that they have Who to do wouldn't? like at midnight. And but Joe Spano's in on it too. He like oh, he like corner her to get in. Men. It. And it's, so it's kind of, is with this really, being after Rosemary's Baby? So yeah, is that that kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. But super low budget, but like fairly well acted. I, and just I think really I like this. That era yeah. was full of those kind of films. Yeah. Like sorority girls that it's uh, a satanic uh, cult. Yeah. The whole we had them even for made for TV movies that were on the sexiest oh, yeah. side. Yeah. 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 But this movie combines like a satanic cult with cannibals and ghosts. That's hilarious. And yeah. It's pretty good. And it has... The, what about the groovy ghoulies? <laughs> <laughs> no. Don't get started on the groovy ghoulies. No, don't even but give the, me The ending started. of this, not to give away the ending, but the, <laughs> the ending of Warlock Moon is great yeah. because 
as the end credits are going, there's still something going on, and there's a final great shock jolt at the very, very end Ooh. after the after the end credits have finished. Ooh, I um, like the very yeah. pre yes. Avengers. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's really obscure, very low budget, but it's again that kind of movie you saw like at two o'clock in the morning. This is before forget. Ferris Bueller. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. Right. That's yes. talk about a horror movie. No, it's not a horror film. That uh, no. that is the well, that, no. is, that is the Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer <laughs> no. of comedy. No, of John Hughes comedy. Yeah. That is. It's a warm, <laughs> he, wonderful, he, heartwarming. He is a sociopath. In Someone the making. give me a cup. But they. Oh. <laughs> But they bring it. You've earned it, my friend. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I got another one. Wait, you got another one? I love it. I talked about The Devil's Nightmare, which involved a succubus. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to talk about another movie from 1982 called The Incubus. Oh, Oh, yes. Oh, now that. Directed by John Hughes, who who directed um, uh, Legend of Hell House. Yes. You know, this movie came out at the height of, you know, slasher mania, slasher films, and this kind of got lost in the shuffle. Most of the people who reviews that you did see were not favorable reviews, but this is a creepy, unsettling, moody, bleak little movie um, with John Cassavetes. Yes, of all people, oh. mm-hmm. and it's this small New England town. Well, John Cassavetes. Uh, is, speaking of uh, Rosemary's Baby, of course, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But I mean, and you know, this is later in his career, but he actually gives a really good, solid performance. It's this small New England town that's plagued by these. Horrific rape murders. Mm-hmm. Uh, these women are being just horribly assaulted, and John Cassavetes is like the local doctor, and he's trying to figure out what's going on. And the evidence from the crime scenes is really weird. Like the, the sperm that was left in the women is like not human sperm. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. and it's just really bizarre. Was it bizarre. possibly whale sperm? <laughs> 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 possibly. <laughs> oh my god! I'm just curious. But, oh um, my god! It wasn't god. a cop, but it, okay. <laughs> so it's not human. Right. As as he's looking into this, it, it starts to look like there could be like a. And this is pre DNA, so they can't really. It's like that yeah. kind of thing where we can only identify it as yeah, not yeah, human. It's yeah. very yeah. mysterious, and he I, I remember this it. movie. Do you? Yeah, and the only reason is I think I was playing D and D at the time, and we knew what an incubus <laughs> of course was. You, are. you know, so yeah. you know what I mean. It's right. that kind of thing of. Sure. Uh, right, but, but he also, starts to yeah. investigate it, and it looks like there from like local legend that it could be like an actual supernatural force, and an incubus is a a demon that assaults women at night. You know, assaults people in their bed while they're sleeping. And a succubus is a female demon. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. So, see, these women are being raped around the town, and looks like it could actually be a demonic being doing this. Uh, the incubus is actually usually made by a wizard. I'm just this is the like definition, wow. but it's usually made by like uh, get the nerd like, over here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The imp in the bottle. Yeah, you know the classic imp yeah, in the bottle. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is an incubus. But yeah, yeah, Mr. D. But it's a sexual sure. demon. It's a sexual well, it's demon. also using an old horror. Which uh, side of radio, the die is that? <laughs> <laughs> the 10 10 seconds okay, okay. Oh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> which I'm just joking <laughs> but anyway like John Cassavetes is like he, his wife has passed away he has a daughter who's just kind of coming into womanhood so he's and, the incubus and, uh, no 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 <laughs> stop but, trying to figure uh, out the film but it's a weird kind of like ancestral kind of thing going in, ancestral incestuous incestuous or in. <laughs> Ancestral. Ancestral. It's like, is it, is, is it someone who's... Ancestral, <laughs> ancestral is a mixture of ancestral and ancestral. He's trying to find his yeah. history. There, there's Ancestral.com, like, the, by the way. Ancestral <laughs> themes. Like, there's weird things going on, like where he's kind of attracted to his daughter, and his daughter's played by Aaron Noble, who is the good girl in Class of 1984. Okay. Um, right. John Ireland is also in it as a very cranky cop. Mm-hmm. But it's like I said, it's a very bleak movie. It kind of it really gets under your skin though. It, really, it grows on you. And it's it's really well done. It's it's not like a typical slasher movie, which I think people thought was. It's it's pretty good. It's worth right. checking out. It's okay. All just, right. Very, and also, there's right. that whole thing of the whole genre of films of strange things happening in small England, New England towns. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, that's, you know, where you find his, some historical well, item. That's Lovecraft. Or, that's yeah, H.P. Yeah, Lovecraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Or prophecy. Movies yeah. Like that. yeah. Which, by the way, real quickly, if you haven't seen The Call of Cthulhu, which is a modern day silent movie. Oh, that is oh, a yeah, pretty, pretty faithful adaptation of the H.P. Lovecraft story. Check that one out. Okay. I'm going to throw a couple out to you throw real fast. Them out, man. These are ones that I'm sure Sean knows yeah. very well. First okay. of all, I, I don't know how horrifying it is, but it's a really good movie. Simon, King of the Witches. Love that movie. No, I don't know that one. 1971, Andrew Prine, who is Simon, and he is this warlock. Oh, he, okay. he, he, <laughs> I think he, I have he, seen he lives it. In a, he lives in a- is it in England? 
No, it's no, American. No, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. He lives in like a, a drain. Yeah, he's, he lives in a sewer duct. He lives in a <laughs> sewer duct. He's, like he's like a homeless hippie. Yeah, he's like a, this hippie that goes around and just like sells potions and incantations and all that. And he sort of infiltrates these society parties. And he has this friend who's this young prostitute, but they're yeah. just pals, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's really uh, good. What and year it's really, is the movie? I'm sorry. This is uh, 1971. And really great because it's almost like a one man show. With with Andrew Prime. And they kind of break the fourth wall. He kind of talks to the camera. He talks to the camera a couple times. It's kind of cool. He's very blasé about his magic. Yeah. Very nuts and bolts about it. His goal is to become a god. And so he's trying to get there. But in the meantime, he has to make a living. And there's a guy, for example, who's at this party. Who There's a lot of these people in these society circles who don't really believe right. in any of this. And so one guy really insults him. He gives the guy a reading and the guy doesn't pay him. So he's like, all right, I'm going to take you out. And within two days, it happens exactly the way he says but the way the guy is killed is, you know, he sees this dog barking up against the wall and he goes to where the dog is barking, he looks up at what the dog is barking at. <laughs> and like then this, piano or, no, uh, no, 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 no this, this plant just like falls off and oh, hits him fantastic. in the wow. yeah. skull. Yeah, and really it's just, good. it's wow. great. I mean, for Andrew Prine alone, I mean, yeah, yeah he's, it he's sounds so great. Good. So it's, it's good. It's in kind it. of the ultimate Andrew Prine movie. You're like, <laughs> it is. It yeah. really is a tour de force. It's got a Brenda Scott who was his girlfriend at the time. And it also, so hot. Yeah, too yeah yummy. and it's really nice and it's it's got a nice sense of humor it doesn't take itself too seriously that's a really yeah. good one and then this is one that sean turned me on to chosen survivors oh, chosen man, that's survivors. a great one. 1974 mm. science fiction horror movie talk about this cast jackie cooper alex cord richard jekyll Bradford Dillman, wow. Diana Muldaur, oh, wow, yeah. Barbara Babcock. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, so these people are hustled into this nuclear bomb shelter uh-huh. that has been created by the government. Okay. And they're like uh, sort of a sampling of humanity. They get an artist, they get a scientist, they get an athlete, they like get everybody. Chosen, chosen yeah, survivors. Yeah, they've chosen these chosen survivors and they yeah. put them in this place and they're told, you know, the bombs are dropping. This is where you're going to live from now on. You guys got to work it out. You're the last of society. And they're all, of course, freaked out. Right. While they're getting accustomed to their surroundings, they also find out that their little sanctuary has been infiltrated by vampire bats. (laughs) No. And so these vampire bats are flying through, trying to kill people. Right. And they're doing their best to fight them off and everything. So they're like not little vampire bats then. No, they're they're little. little But but there are a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. But the the tension, the people are turning on each other. Yeah. Within this scenario of the of having to battle the vampire bats you think they would have picked a better place you would think, <laughs> yes. yeah yeah there, or at least get an exterminator before you set it up you know, like cone that. or something yeah, in this right. Right. Seal it. cock right. it cock yeah. it thank you yeah. <laughs> yeah which was the tagline we should have cocked, cocked it, it. <laughs> But that sounds hilarious. It, 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 but yeah. it's it's actually is it it's, horrific. It, it is yeah, yeah it's really it, it good. is really well acted. It's a taut little thriller, and there's also a bunch of twists yes, that I are. cannot give away that it, are really interesting. It's a great Twilight not, Zone really. worthy. Yeah, no. and it's chosen also kind of survivors. It's, like, it's kind of chosen survivors. Seventies too, because it, it's a hybrid of like kind of disaster, end of the world movies, and nature strikes back movie. You yes, know, it's all combined. It's really cool, and everything kind of works. It it's, does. It works it's really well. Like three different movies that are all kind of working together to form one. <laughs> and <Yeah>. like, a, <laughs> like a Japanese superhero. <laughs> like that one, yes. Yeah. And here you go. You can get that movie on MGM Midnight Movie Double Feature with oh. The Earth Die Screaming. There you go. No. Yeah. Are you serious? Yes. Uh, great. You're Post. welcome, Monster yeah. Party fans. Wow. <laughs> Matt, I'm going to have to look for that. Check it Damn. out. I mean, you guys have brought up some amazing, amazing movies. And we could go on and on. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. Could. Because I, 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 I want to tell our listeners, <laughs> no, actually, you, I can see Dave and Matt, and, and they have these huge lists of other films we haven't touched uh, we, we tomorrow. Lo- so, like I said, we love... I went we'll, through, we, but... Yeah, we'll yeah. have I could, to do this But it again. does remind me of other films. It does, yeah. 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 We love to like, turn our listeners on to other titles and stuff yeah. that maybe they've not heard of. There's so much out yeah. there that well, you, we are you still you mentioned many that I've never heard yeah. of. Yeah, oh, yeah. Either. 
I've well, created he, a list. Sean's man. the man, man. Yeah. He's like, he has turned me on to so many things where it's like, wow, how did you even find this? Yeah. <laughs> we'll do a part two, part three, and part four for this episode. I, you know what, Sean? <laughs> I can't wait for that. Yeah. Sometimes I can't believe that we've lived this long and haven't heard of some of these titles. <laughs> I can't believe we've lived this long. Well, <laughs> as you start, yes, exactly. But also, as you start to get older, you go, I'll never have time to see all these. That's so, true. Uh, part of it is, I, I if find, you can we find, find time. Yeah, yeah. Well, find you guys time. don't have kids. You don't have kids. Right? Yeah. I've got, I've I mean, got kids. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. That's why you haven't seen a lot of these. No, that's not, no. Yeah. Listen, you have kids, you can't spend the time. You right. can't stay up till four in the morning watching movies and right. then take the kids to school right. and then go that's to a true. job. But you know, and that's one thing I love about you, Dave, because I've I bonded with you here. You know, <laughs> I really have. Thank you so much. Hey, man, is there anything that uh, you've got working on? Uh, yeah, you want to play? I have nothing on the books. All right. Got, uh, no, come on. <laughs> There's a final episode of Mike and Molly that I'm in. That's uh, coming up, oh, right? coming up. Has yeah. not aired yet. Has not aired yet. You should check um, that out. Yeah, and I think you can still, if you have DirecTV, they occasionally will rerun our canceled uh, Ghost Hunter show, which is really which funny. Which was really, really funny. funny. Which I thought should have gone on forever. I, I agree. Thought, I agree. Like, uh, I thought, who hasn't thought of this idea? And if you haven't seen it, International Ghost of Eskers Hollywood Division on Audience Network. On cool. DirecTV. Absolutely. Check that out. Yeah. Cool. International yeah. Ghost Investigators? Yep. That's Hollywood awesome. Division. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Um, One of those titles that just rolls off. The <laughs> 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 Am I, I, when, in naming it, I was like, all those shows have such long, convoluted <laughs> yes, titles, yes. and they're all... And we get some of the responses we get. The show's over, and we're not making them anymore, and we get actually mad ghost hunters who yell at us and what, say... What, because you're parodying them? Yeah. Uh, some <laughs> of them don't realize we're a parody... That's the other thing. Oh, we've had people wow. who didn't realize it was a parody. They're great at investigating ghosts, yeah. but they don't understand parody. But then we've had ones idiots. that are really mad at us. One of them said, you've got to get a hold of Jenny McCarthy and tell her that there is a succubus. You know, there is a you know a, a satyr that's... Uh, <laughs> you do have a, something you have to watch out for. And it's just... Uh, I mean, okay. All right. more power to them. Yeah. 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 Hey, yeah. yeah. Hey, is it time for a listener shout out? Yes. Let's do All a right. shout out. Uh, this goes out to Walt Keegan from New Jersey. Walt oh. Keegan. Walt not not Keegan. to be confused with Walt Keegan, Illinois. No, that's no. where uh, Jack Benny was born. Ah, that's true. Very nice. Uh, Walt loves history, comic books, and horror flicks. Oh, uh, who does he'd, it? He'd get along <laughs> with this group ah, yeah. very well. Yeah. Yes, he would. Recently, Walt was building his own Stormtrooper armor and listening oh. to Monster Party on the soundtrack. I remember wow. those pictures. Yeah. Well, yeah. here's yeah. the Did he send pictures, really? Yes. He did. Yeah. Awesome. He did. Yeah. Judging by those pictures, Walt has also has a very well-stocked bar in his living room. Oh, so Walt, we love you, bud. Next we're time we're in Jersey, we're now, coming over. How old yeah. is Walt? We're coming over. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care. He's, I think Walt is close. He's got a bar, Dave. Yeah. Come on. That's what I'm saying. At first, I was going, oh, what a great 14-year-old kid. He's building a structure. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. It's great. He was listening to the podcast. That's wonderful. Young, young lad. Let's also- Walter Keegan- Let's also take this opportunity. I imagine he said, like, I really like that, that monster party. <laughs> These guys he are great. Yeah, he didn't sound like <laughs> yeah. right. What is that? I like to drink. Yeah. Holy mackerel, that? you're great. How, how is that armor coming out? <laughs> yeah. um, Good for him. Thank you. Let's Walter also Bird. take this opportunity to congratulate newlywed Evan Archer. Who yeah. Oh, congratulations, Evan. Evan Archer. Yeah, Evan, Evan was going to sport the monster party cap on his wedding day, but yeah. uh, his bride took it off. In Good the for her. What? Good for her. And you I know, said, um, you could still a no. <laughs> <laughs> Evan, welcome to married life. Yes. <laughs> also, yeah. um, we've all been there, buddy. We all been there. Yeah. Also, a quick mention to Belinda Caldero, who we were lucky enough to was meet. Was she in the Go Go's? <laughs> <laughs> no, she was in the the Brazilian Go Go's. Oh, okay. Let the oh, man sorry. talk, sorry. for God's sake. Sorry, go ahead. We were recently up at the Silver Scream Film Festival in Santa Rosa and uh, oh. Belinda was one of our listeners and That's she right. was nice, nice enough to come up to us. Yeah. She's great. She, she recognized our voices, she yeah. said. Yeah. Uh -huh. In the crowd. That yeah. was Santa guess, Rosa the made up town for, <laughs> for yes, Hitchcock? Yeah. From Shadow of a Doubt, yeah. For, uh, yeah. In yeah. Asia, the body snap. Belinda, thank you. Belinda. Thank you. Belinda, thank you. yeah, she was great. Belinda. Thanks all our listeners for their support. We love you guys. And before we go on to anything else, I have something kind of a little serious to drop on you. All oh. right. Blackfish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, porpoises are also. No, being come on, come on. Family. No, come and on. Yeah. What, what, yeah. what do you got to say there, Matt? So, Carrie and I have been dealing with, we've been putting together a trust, a will and trust. And part of that, of course, entails who we are going to leave things to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, I want to let you guys know that you guys get individually 
a sixth of my collection. Oh my no stuff. way. Yes. Wow. This also includes Dana and Ken. Okay. Wow. Wow. You get a Monster Party cap that I think you'll be... <laughs> Dave, no. Dave. Dave gets a game. Wow. Dave, Dave, I would like, and I want you guys to be whoever are still around, I want you to give Dave first choice of the 16 millimeter films. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay? Like That's that. fine. Right. I just I just want to make sure I don't get any of the, the, the figures that are now, like out of the pack. Larry, I was expecting <laughs> this already. Larry? In yes. my sixth, could they all still be sealed? Yeah. I know... That you're not fond of my collection? No, no, that's not true. It's it's a lovely. But collection. one of the things I do have is a, a couple fluorescent lights, so you can kind of okay. wave that over the which figures, have, uh, and, yeah. yeah, and figure out which ones you want to keep. Spray okay. some luminol. On yeah, exactly, them. exactly. Well, so, but I want that's... you guys to have that. Also, Derek is my brother-in-law. Is also Derek Robertson, wow. friend also of the show. Of the show. Well, I'm yeah. very honored, man. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I want you guys yeah, to, awesome. and, you, and I trust you guys to like. Also, I want my brother-in-law. Patrick. Not, not to touch some certain things. No, I want us. him to be, you know, he oh, lives okay, in Japan, okay, but I want you to, you know, fix him up with some stuff that he wants. He you can know? get a lot of the Japanese stuff, though. It's yeah, not like, but he, I think he likes you know, some American fine. stuff he might enjoy. Yeah, so, okay. But I wanted you to know, I want you guys I'm, to wow. carry on wow. yes. my collecting legacy wow. and go through the stuff, and I'm sure amongst you all, Very you'll be touched. able to yeah. we'll decide control, what we you can want. trash most of it. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of it you could sell. Here's well, the deal. Well, well, Once cool. they're gone. eBay lots. Well, thank you, Matt. Thank you. That's really very lovely. Yeah. That's a lovely thought. So thank you. You're to you and literally your in my will. That's something wow. that wow. That's something that's my great. wife and I, Gina, are, are in the process of doing, too. We just started that whole process, too. So wow. There we go. Yeah, yeah, wow. So are you, are you what, what am I getting? Your, yeah, yeah. Are you <laughs> leaving stuff to us too? Uh, zombies okay. of Moratau. Okay, uh, right. Oh, <laughs> you're not wow. saying we're getting older, are you? By saying that you made your living well plan. Well, it's part of a bigger issue, but that's for uh, <laughs> that's for private. Oh, and John Matta gets all my Ben Grimm stuff. Yeah, come to think of it, I, I no one else would know what to do with my stuff, so I would want it myself yeah. to go to you guys too. Yes, I know, there you it's true. right? Yeah. Exactly. But I want it. that maybe to be that's very why, clear. Wow. Maybe that's yeah. why Matt brought it up. Mm, well. <laughs> I'm not trying to pressure no, anyone. I'm not saying no. anyone else should include me, Larry. Yeah, yeah. I I'm not trying to pressure to anyone. Include no. themselves in my, you know. <laughs> right. But I would rather my stuff go to people, people who, who appreciate sure. and kindred spirit. actually enjoy yeah. it, wow. and you know, you guys can work it out amongst yourselves. Thing. Who gets what? But you know what, though, we're never gonna die. That's true. That's right. Yeah. But by the time we reach... Oh, they're going to cure death. Yeah. By, by the time we <laughs> reach... coming. By the time we reach that age, it'll be taken care of. Don't, we know this. Yeah. 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 No. To quote yeah. Uhura <laughs> from I Mud, I want an android body. I want to live forever. Wow. And on that note, <laughs> on that note, maybe uh, maybe it's time to remind our listeners that they can um, follow us on Facebook at Monster Party TV and our YouTube channel, also Monster Party TV, and follow us on Twitter at Monster Party HQ. And we would I love actually it. do follow you guys on Twitter, and we wow, follow you. How about Dave. that? Yeah, yeah it's, it's true synchronicity. And if you're listening to us on iTunes, please take a moment and write a review. We'd love to hear from you. And I'm uh, at D Anthony Higgins. At Twitter. You could say it louder. <laughs> and a little yeah, more enthusiasm. Yeah, How about yeah. with a little bit more yeah. enthusiasm? At Twitter. Pretend you're still a guest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you can follow me. <laughs> How about this? Hey, Dave, where can we follow you? Can we follow you somewhere? At mumblingcreepyguy.com. <laughs> Twitter. And it's plastic cup. <laughs> <laughs> at Twitter.com. <laughs> oh, my How appropriate. God. And you've been listening to Monster Party, a presentation of the Fangoria Podcast Network. It's produced by Matt Weinhold and executive produced by Thomas DeFeo and Ken Hanley of Fangoria Entertainment. For press opportunities, advertising inquiries, and information about Monster Party, contact Ken at Fangoria.com. On that note, I am Matt Weinhold. I think I'm Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Strofe. And I'm James Gonis. And I'm Dave Higgins. Keep he monstering. <laughs> Keep America strong. Watch horror obscura films, which apparently includes things <laughs> with whales. <laughs> <laughs> How about okay. this for a title? Have you seen this? Uh, that's almost kind of like 
And then you show your dick. <laughs> uh, well, it makes it even better, uh, can, which I'm okay it, with. It, it works on a lot of levels, is yeah. what uh, I'm saying. Wait, wait, wait. What about... I had something for a second. What about... Um, it could just be like cool movies. You, you probably cool movies you may have never seen. Great. No, 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 no. Don't, don't. Say, you can say great. He's fine. He wants great in there. No, I want great. Where do I come? Where? I where? What do you think? I want great. What do you think? I have no opinion. I am. <laughs> yes, I. I no. What? No. No. Cool? I. My my point is, what's the <laughs> what's the point of qualifying it with like, oh, you might want to see this? No. Let's let's bring it with great, and then let the audience decide for themselves. Uh, yeah. Let's say. I don't know. Yeah. Me, maybe, I don't know what's wrong with cool. What, what's the danger of overselling it? If, if we could say cool. Great. All right. You know, what, it's what, a how about cool, great what's movie? Cool? Horror films you've cool. probably never seen. Yeah. I, I don't cool, think cool, cool is exciting, cool, though. Cool horror flicks you've, ne- you've, you've never seen. What do you think, Matt? Look, I found a few pages on the internets. <laughs> with <laughs> with your with your cool or uh, great horror films you've never seen, I've seen that a few times. Basically, there are some really obscure ones sure. that are really great. I could do this episode ten times over. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot but, of them. I mean, yeah. there's a lot I haven't uh, personally long, seen. I, yeah. I couldn't do it ten times over. I had to stick with great. Great. Yeah, you're right. No, you're Actually, right. You're right. No, but I could, it, I could do it once with great, and mine are great to me. But I understand, James. But like the idea is for our listeners. You said yourself. But you think they're great. You think yours are great, James. You I have ones that I think are really good, but great. James, well, it's very James, subjective. You the said, nature of the. You, you know, said yourself true. that you like the idea, and so Blade Runner is great. Oh, that is a great. Movie. Okay, right. you like the idea of how we educate our listeners, and our listeners respond and interact with us, and say, you know, because your podcast, never I never knew film. about this yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, but those movies that they're sometimes checking out are not classic movies. Can we say, like how about this? quirky, weird, obscure movies. Yes. There is something great about that. <clears throat> and to and me, it was always the idea of, my, some of my very favorite movies, and we talked about this on the phone, are films that, no one else knew about it at school or knew exactly. about it. I mean, right. we're in an information age. It's a lot easier right. to see stuff. So it's a harder to say. It's harder I say, to say you that. say obscure, great films. Obscure, great horror films. How about horror obscura? <laughs> sure, that works for me. I like that. Oh, no, really? I like that as a title, sure. It's I a like good title. That. Yeah. I so it go that, that, and then you can have that as a subtitle underneath it. Really cool films yeah, you've probably never works. seen. Horror yeah, Obscura? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, like right? I, yeah. Like I like it. I like it. We all in agreement? Sure. Hit record. <laughs> Guess what? We already have been. No! <laughs> Mind blown. Mind blown. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you serious? You're on Monster Party Camera. <laughs> oh, good Lord. <laughs> so, why don't we start then? All right. Moment of silence. Who's passed recently? We should. Uh, as long Patty as Duke. Can. Patty yeah, Duke. Patty right. Duke. But let's not go. In, let's not well, time stamp. As long as you're Patty taking Duke. a moment of silence, you know, might as well use it. Tonight's All right, tonight, to Patty Duke and to uh, the Miracle Worker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a heads up that I have a listener shout out. Oh but, but shit. I'm also going to have two very very brief. How many fucking cards do you have? My God. <laughs> that guy just opened his wallet. He's got like 19 different this, credit cards. I've seen on TV. Diner's Club. The Wonder Wallet. Yeah. Okay. And the great thing about it is, speaking of sciatica, it bends. So uh, you're, you know. Uh, it's a nice uh, episode of sciatica. Uh, I don't believe that. <laughs> I have to change my wallet every once in a while. 20 okay. bucks God. target. Okay. I can't Wonder believe wallet? we're talking Wonder about this. Wonder Wallet. No, uh, I have one Wonder listener wallet? shout out, but I'm also going to have two sort of follow ups very, very brief after that. So. We've talked about deaths and sciatica. This has to be the <laughs> oldest show ever. <laughs> no, we haven't talked about your um, colon- colonoscopy. Oh, <laughs> that's good. No, that is, <laughs> you want to talk horror. Who's your guest, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to start this. All right. Okay. okay. okay.